Hey guys welcome back to the channel this is story about what if Naruto was trained in route by Danzo while yet keeping his humanity part 1 before I start, please do support for more amazing content and comments for part 2, do consider to subscribe my channel and share my video to your friends and check out the description as well, let's start the video. Hiraya hopped from building to building with the unconscious Anbu on his shoulder. He rapped on the window of the Hokage Tower to take his fun way in. A few seconds later he was greeted by the old kindly face of his old mentor, what exactly would it take for you to come through the door like a normal person? The old Hokage asked. Normal? Where's the fun in that? Besides when has anything about me ever been normal? Jiriaya responded. Well you're never gonna change and act like a respectable shinobi, so we may as well get on topic, how did your mission to the sound village go? Asked the wizened warrior taking notice of the short Anbu across Jiraiya's shoulders, but decided to ignore him for now. Changing to a more serious tone the white-haired pervert spoke, I didn't find too much on Oro team's actual plans actions, but I was able to find plenty on the base itself, such as the number of troops and its fortifications, but nothing extraordinary. However I was unaware that you had sent an Anbu there, you know I work better alone Siratobi sensei. Siratobi wore a confused expression on his face in Anbu. He inquired. I never sent an Anbu to the sound village. Jiraiya flicked his thumb back towards the body across his shoulders, well some way or another this guy was there, I found him near the border on my way back in a lousy condition, although now that I think about it his wound seemed to be all healed, and he just seems to have chakra exhaustion, so it might be a little while until he wakes up. Jiraiya placed him down on a couch in Saratobi's study, Hiruzen removed his mask, only to see a young boy with three whiskers on each cheek, bright blonde hair, and a scar above his left eye. Naruto-kun. The old man gasped in surprise. This caught Jiraiya by surprise as well wait did you say Naruto? As in Yuzumaki Naruto my godson? Questioned the green and red clothed man. The one in the same said the sand aim while inspecting the boy's mask noticing a kanji for root in the top right corner, Danzo he growled out. Danzo must have somehow gotten his hands, pardon me hand on Naruto-kun without me knowing, no wonder both Danzo and Naruto-kun have been so quiet lately, Danzo had always requested Naruto-kun be given to him for training, for all we know now Naruto-kun here could be an emotionless drone right now. Siratobi said. I think I had better have a word with Danzo to see what all he has done and try to remedy the damage he has caused, it'll be pointless to question Naruto-kun, Danzo probably has his ways to keep his subordinates quiet about him and his actions. Here is instated to his student. He snapped his fingers and an Anbu appeared yes Hokage-sama what do you require? The boar masked Anbu asked. Boar, go to Danzo's residence and tell him I request his presence in my office. Ordered the Hokage. Hi Hokage-sama answered the Anbu before he disappeared. Now all we can do is wait and keep an eye on our little blonde friend here, said the old pipe smoker. Thirty minutes later, there was a knock on the door, enter spoke the old war veteran glaring at Jiraiya who seemed oblivious and wishing Jiraiya would take notes on this action, revolving around the use of doors instead of taking notes on girls. Danzo walked in flanked by the boar mask Anbu Siratobi had sent, you called for me Hirazan. Spoke the old war hawk. Yes I did, you're dismissed for now boar answered Siratobi, and the Anbu swiftly left the room. As soon as he was gone Saratobi quickly went to business, would you care to explain to me why Jiraiya here found Naruto-kun dressed as an Anbu, with a root symbol on his mask, covered in wounds near the border in the direction of the sound village? Questioned Hiruzen. If Danzo was surprised that Naruto had been found like that he sure didn't show it, he merely answered truthfully to try and salvage as much as he could and clean up this mess. I know you will simply just see through any lie so I shall shoot straight, I've trained young Naruto here for about 7 years to the best of my ability, he is quickly becoming one of my best men, and I had sent him on an espionage mission to the sound village. Spoke the bandage covered man. So is there any real reason why I shouldn't just kill you for turning Minato's child into an emotionless weapon? Said Hiruzen with barely repressed rage. Well let me stop you there, against my best attempts to turn him into an emotionless weapon as you called him, he has in fact resisted any and all attempts to turn him into one, the best I could do was have him be able to switch his emotions off at will, and then be completely normal the next second, which is actually a better thing. He's even resisted my personal seal that I place on all of my men more times than I can count, so no need to worry about that or me controlling him or anything, but I was planning on giving you a proposition as soon as he returned, seeing as he is here now I might as well give it to you spoke the root commander. Here is in raised an eyebrow, a proposition you say? He asked gaining interest. Danzo nodded and responded yes in order to show you that my methods of training are best I wanted to place Naruto here in the academy, its most promising student seems to be Fugaku's youngest son Sasuke, he will be Naruto's competition, compare the two of them at the end of their time at the academy in two weeks from now, and you shall see that my way is best. If Achiha is better than him at the end I will disband Root and place all members into appropriate ranks, depending on their skills and age. 
if I am correct and Naruto is better then you shall implement some of my training methods there, I'm not even gonna ask for the emotional training I know there's no hope of you agreeing to that, but we shall make sure to create real shinobi and kinoichi, not useless fangirls this village is so full of. What do you say Siratobi? Asked the Cyclops. After a few minutes of contemplation Siratobi spoke well my old rival you have yourself a deal, now when Naruto-kun wakes up we will see what he found out about my wayward student and then you may tell him about what he must do. Glad you agree Siratobi, I'm confident you will be impressed with what he can do said the old warhawk. One hour later, Naruto slowly opened his eyes and was welcomed to the sight of three old geezers staring down at him. It seems I'm back in Konoha and in Hokage-jiji's office he thought to himself. Welcome back Naruto-kun Siratobi said with a warm smile. Naruto groaned while he struggled to sit up good to be back Hokage-sama the blonde answered. Was your mission a success? Asked Danzo not wasting time beating around the bush. Looks like the old man already knows all about Danzo training me, so I don't have to play the fool around him anymore, but I better act respectful right now. Naruto thought to himself before answering back hi Danzo-sama, I had completed my mission without a problem until some idiot rookie blew up the information department near the time I was preparing to leave and ended up blowing my cover. Ureya flinched at this while Naruto continued as I was trying to make a break for it I was engaged by Orochimaru's elite bodyguard, dubbed the Sound 5, I was winning and about to finish them off when I was confronted by their fight member who appeared to be their leader named Kimimuro Kagaya. All five of them now ganged up on me while in the stage 2 of their curse seal, I'll place everything I know about that in my official report, but anyway after that I was getting killed and wouldn't last long as long as Kamimura was there, I was almost out of chakra by then, so I was forced to use a burst of Kaiyu-chan's chakra to get away and sprint all the way to the border, and that's all I remember before things went black and then I woke up here. Stated Naruto. Both Jureya and the Sandane were shocked that he could use the Kaiyuubis chakra, let alone knew about it. How long have you known about the Kaiyuubi and did you say Kaiyu-chan Naruto-kun? Asked Saratobi. For about two years, oh and yes the Kaiubi is in fact a she, she told me what had really happened eight years ago when she was forced to attack, in fact she's actually quite nice, but I'll discuss more of that later answered the root member. The almighty Kaiubi is a girl. Both Siratobi and Jureya yelled. Jureya waited about three seconds and then asked is she hot. All three other occupants in the room sweat dropped at this. Saratobi bowed his head in shame of his student and thought to himself three seconds, that's gotta be some kind of record for him. Yeah, yeah I get that whenever I tell people, granted it's just been you two and Danzo that know, but that's besides the point back to my report, the most important thing that I learned while I was there was that both the sound and the sand plan to invade us during the next time the Chunin exams are being held here, which will be in about 6 months, I assume most of Suna will just be following orders of their Kazakiyajin superiors, who has been eliminated and then impersonated by Orochimaru. Said the young Jinchuriki. If the fact about the Kaiubi had surprised them, both were now quite thoroughly shocked. Naruto continued what's worse is we can't really do anything to prove that the Kazakiyaj isn't who he says he is without fighting him, and so the only thing we can really do is prepare for what's bound to happen. I shall give a full report on their battle plans and strategy when I submit the report and I'll make a copy for you as well Hokage Jiji. First thing first I need some more rest to get over this chakra exhaustion, it's mostly gone now though. Saratobi shook out of his stupor and replied very well Naruto-kun I shall go and try to make as many adjustments to our security and fortifications as I can in preparation for this invasion until I get your report. By the way Danzo has something to discuss with you, so I'll leave you two alone. Naruto nodded and waited until Jureya had left as well before speaking what is it you wish to speak of Danzo-sama. He assumed it might be another mission, so he kept his urge to make Danzo twitch by calling him Jiji in check. Yes it's about your next assignment you are to join the academy and show off all of your skills, I don't want you to hold back, flaunt your power, however don't be arrogant, I want you to show the power of Root, just don't use the Kaiubi's power, oh, and don't kill any of them he added with a smirk that Naruto shared. And one more thing, be sure to make the Ichiha look totally pathetic. Hi Danzo-sama it shall be done. The loyal soldier replied. Good I have confidence that this could be your most simple mission in terms of life-threatening situations, none of them stand a chance against you, and you also seem to be very socially adept, so that shouldn't be a problem either. Then he left Naruto by himself. After a couple minutes he thought out loud a mission where I get to show off and publicly humiliate a stuck-up clan heir, this just might be my new favorite mission, this'll be fun. One day later, Naruto was all prepped and ready for his first real day at the academy, he was wearing an outfit consisting of black anbu pants with steel tooed shoes, a dark blue muscle shirt and black fingerless gloves with iron knuckles and guards on the top, and a wakizashi strapped across his back. He had two separate pouches on his back and then two separate kunai shuriken holsters on his legs, and although you could really see them unless you looked closely had a ceiling tattoo on each wrist for more shuriken kunai. He never really cared much for fashion just brutal efficiency. 
he stepped out of his apartment and then simply used Shunshin to teleport to the front of the academy building, scattering random passerby out of the way he walked with a gait that screamed power and deadliness while not showing a shred of arrogance. He strode in and looked around, he simply ignored all the civilian children and focused on the clan heirs his class seemed to be full, of he first spotted an Inuzuaka being dropped off by a very feral looking mother, and shortly later an Aburam who quickly went and stood off into the shadows to observe the other students, then came in a young Hyuga who looked like she wanted to melt into her jacket rather than stand proud like all the other Hyuga were known to do. After that came in a pair of children one with a lazy expression and another one stuffing his face with potato chips, clearly Anara and a Kimimichi. After that came a girl with a purple outfit and long blonde hair that came down to her butt, who clearly was popular, judging by the group of civilian girls that seemed to follow her around like her posse clearly a Yamanaka, I mean how many blondes other than him were in Kanoha. He was about to keep looking around when he stopped and looked right next to the Yamanaka and saw a bunch of neon pink hair, talk about standing out he thought to himself. That's like stealth's worst enemy what does pink hair blend within the forest? Nothing. She is so dead when it comes to life. Moving on he saw his target, in strode like he owned the place was Ichiha Sasuke, followed by a group of his fangirls. That seemed to be all the people that mattered to him, and then proceeded to head into class. He quickly sat down at the top row in the corner to keep an eye on all that happened in the class. Soon enough after everyone had sat down, in walked a man with a scar across his nose, and in wearing the standard Chunin outfit, he organized his papers and silenced the class, and then proceeded to call the roll. A and we all know everyone is there and their names so I'll just skip this part, seeing that everyone was there, Hiruka spoke today we have a new student in this class, he has had training elsewhere for the past 7 years, so don't worry about him getting special treatment, he's definitely good enough to be here, please stand up Yuzumaki Naruto. Naruto stood up and looked around at the class so they could all see who he was. Just as he sat down the class was interrupted by a certain canine's loud yells hey, how come he got to skip the past 4 years, well we got stuck in this lame class that's so unfair. Since when is life ever fair Kiba? Just sit down and be quiet. Hiruka said, annoyed. After that there wasn't really any outburst since they all knew they couldn't really do anything about it, so they all just waited until it was time to go outside and do the sparring matches and such. Hiruka called the first pairing which coincidentally for Naruto happened to be him and Sasuke. Although the fact that both of their surnames start with the letter U makes it less of a shock. Yuzumaki Naruto and Ichiha Sasuke please come to the center of the circle please. Naruto simply walked in while Sasuke strode in while basking in the praise of his fangirls, with Ino and Sakura leading the cheer. Naruto vs Sasuke Hajim. Haruka shouted and then took a few steps back. Sasuke spoke first this will be over in a second, this no-name loser stands no chance against a Nutcha Ak. Naruto had simply charged and threw a right hook to fast for Sasuke to even realize he had moved in the first place. Naruto followed Sasuke as he flew out of the ring and stood over him with his wakizashi at his throat, before he spoke you're right it was over in a second, maybe you should spend more time fighting, then speaking now concede I don't feel like killing petty stuck clan heirs. All of Sasuke's fangirls were in an uproar yelling things like he cheated. And the like Naruto simply stared over at them and said how did I cheat. The match had started it's not my fault Sasuke team wasted time talking and expecting me to stand there and listen. Sasuke just stared at him with rage I will never concede, you just got a lucky shot. Naruto just looked at him, then replied please define the term luck, if it even exists, is it luck that you are just too slow to even dodge a simple punch. You should try to train more instead of preening all the time and screaming about the so-called almighty Ichiha clan, and since you refuse to concede I guess I better just knock you out, night night, then proceeded to strike him on the head with the handle of his blade. Shaoshi Uzumaki Naruto. Shouted Iruka. The rest of the fights were not even worth watching it's not that they were important or amazing in any way, they are just academy students. Sasuke was woken up at the start of the shuriken kunai, when it came to his turn he managed to hit 16 twentieths for shuriken and then 12 fifteenths for kunai. Eat that loser he sneered to Naruto who just looked on impassively, when it came to Naruto he got 20 twentieths on shuriken and 15 fifteenths on kunai. Then just walked right past the fuming Ichiha muttering a pathetic that only Sasuke heard. Next was Jutsu they had learned a bit about it in class, and they were asked if they knew any techniques all the clan heirs had at least one which they promptly showed, after Sasuke finished his fire technique, he was sure that he was the best right until Naruto completely filled the arena with clones of himself, and then showed that they were real. Better not do any of my elemental Jutsu, I might kill a few random gawkers who won't move out of the way. Naruto thought to himself. After everyone shook out of their stupor, Haruka announced it was time to head back into class. Naruto merely wondered I have to do two more weeks of this, oh well might as well just send a shadow clone to do school, will I just go out and train all day. So much for my favorite mission. 
few weeks later day of graduation. The next two weeks went along pretty much the same way as that first day, with Sasuke being completely shown up in every way possible, Naruto apparently takes his orders very seriously. With his grades he received top marks, but was still the dope of the class in terms of overall scores for the entire four years, but they still made him rookie of the year, with Sasu coming in second, and then Sakura being the top female student. A.N. sorry absolutely no competition for top female student I mean there's only three female students that were even bothered to have names, and I can't really fit any ox in so sorry if this upsets you, this was one thing that he never got tired of laughing at, it's ridiculously easy to be the top Kanoichi in his class, if any single one of them took a smidgen of effort into their training, they could be the best of the class. Sakura along with all the other girls, practically failed in the physical portions of class, the only one who didn't was Hinata, but she was too timid and nice to actually win a spar. Sakura was only the top because she aced every single written test they were given and was good at the ever useful Kinoichi lesson flower pressing. He wished that they had more girls like that bun haired chick from the class ahead of them that graduated the year before. Naruto got up around 5 so he could have time to do a few laps around the village to warm up before he had to leave for the academy. Well it's the last day I might as well show up this time a Kaiyu chan Thought Naruto in their telepathic link. Sure just try to make it interesting it's just so boring in here without you going on missions where you actually get to kill, I swear I'm so glad that this academy mission doesn't last more than two weeks, replied the Biju. Sorry about that Kaiwu chan I can't really do any missions because I'm still doing this one, and besides, it's only been two weeks Blondie replied. Yeah yeah I've heard it all before just put on a good show today, if the fight actually lasts more than five seconds said Kaiwubi. After finishing his laps he arrived at the academy with about 10 minutes to spare and took his usual spot in the back corner and waited a couple of minutes for everyone else to get there. Hiruka arrived and with little success gaining their attention, decided to use scratch his nails on the chalkboard, suffice to say they all shut up pretty quick. Smirking Hiruka spoke okay everyone this might be your final day having me here as your teacher, you will be off doing missions and protecting the village, I am very proud to have been your sensei and I wish you all the best of luck on your test. After that he passed the papers around and told them to turn over the papers and begin. Naruto snorted when he read his Ola Kaiwu-chan I got the Anbu level test again, you'd think they would've learned after all the times they tried these two weeks. Wow you humans are stupid, they still hold that petty grudge against me after all these years, they could at least do a better job at trying to fail you though replied the nine-tailed Biju. Hey I resent that. Naruto responded, but it's still true. After everyone had finished their tests they all went outside to do the standard sparring against each other, then shuriken kunai, and then the basic academy jutsu. Once again the teachers placed the top two students against each other, so it could be fair. Aruka read both names off the list for the umpteenth time Yuzumaki Naruto and Ichiha Sasuke please step to the center of the ring, try to not send him to the hospital again he needs to finish the rest of the test today. All the guys snickered and Sasuke's eye twitched. Fine fine Aruka sensei don't worry about it, I'll only knock him out unless for some bizarre reason he decides pull that 50 foot pull pull out of his butt and surrender before it gets that far, Naruto answered cheerfully. Sasuke growled don't mock me. You are a pathetic clanless loser without a bloodline you can never be better than me. Completely oblivious to the fact that he had never so much as gotten a hit in their innumerable amount of fights. Naruto just kept staring over into the trees huh? Did you say something? I was busy staring over at that bird over there. Hiruka spoke, exasperated, if you two are done we can begin, Naruto vs Sasuke, Hajim. Sasuke wasn't that stupid, he knew better than to talk after the fight had started, so this time he decided to attempt to rush Naruto, he ran at a speed that to only the civilian students, looked like he disappeared. Naruto lazily watched him until Sasuke aimed at his head with a spinning axe kick which Naruto simply caught with one hand before promptly spinning and then slamming Sasuke face first onto the ground. Naruto then picked him up and then tossed him headfirst into a tree. So much for giving a show he's already unconscious, I can't even show off, you'd think that he'd actually be able to take a hit after all this time. Shousa Yuzumaki Naruto shouted Aruka with an again as an afterthought. The girls knew better to protest that Naruto cheated after being blasted with killing intent from said blonde. The rest of the fights went by pretty quickly, unless it was a fight between two fangirls then of course they spent 5 to 10 minutes each claiming their love for Sasuke and explaining an ex crusaya ting detail about how they were meant for each other, much to everyone's disdain. Finally when it got to the accuracy test it went the same as that first day, with Shino coming up with third. They then proceeded to go inside and go one by one into the private room to perform the three jutsu and get your headband. It seemed that just about everyone passed the test, after all only a complete and utter moron with absolutely no hope of redemption could actually fail let alone three times in a row right. 
Once everyone had gone, Iruka cleared his throat and spoke congratulations to all of you that passed. I am proud of each and every one of you, now your journey as a ninja is just beginning, so meet here at 8.30 for your team placements. Dismissed. The next morning as Naruto was waiting in his usual spot, for everyone else to get there he happened to overhear a couple classmates talking about some idiotic chunin, trying to steal the forbidden jutsu scroll from the Hokage's office, did he really think he could snatch it from the Kami no Shinobi? Naruto was stopped from listening to more by a couple of screaming Bansher Sakura and Ino, trying to race to sit next to their precious Asu-kun. I totally got here first. Screamed Pinky. No way I was here first. Screamed the Yamanaka clan heir. The Ananoichi must be so proud, the idiotic banter continued until Laruka came in and proceeded to once more scratch his nails all the way across the chalkboard. Now that we've all had our daily dose of stupid cough I mean uh now that we're all here, I will start calling of the team so pay attention. Team 1 to 6 pathetic civilian teams who weren't even bothered to be given names. Hiruka froze did I just say that out loud. Everyone nodded. Um okay team 7 is Ichiha Sasuke, Haruno Sakura, and Yuzumaki Naruto. Ha. Take that Eno pig true love conquers all. Sakura cheered, I'm doom thought both Naruto and Sasuke at the same time. Ahem let me continue, anyway your sensei will be Hada Kakashi. Hiruka said before continuing. Teammate will be Aburam Shino, Hai Uga Hinata, and Inuzuka Kiba, and your sensei will be Uhi Kuranai. Iruka continued on Team 9 is still in circulation, Team 10 is Nara Shikamaru, Akamichi Chaoji, and Yamanaka Ino, and your sensei is Siratobi Asuma. Now everyone may go to lunch and your senseis will be here to pick you up afterwards. Dismissed. Naruto walked over to where Sasuke and Sakura were sitting, hey guys now that we are a team, and all now how about we go out to eat together? The blonde boy asked. I'm gonna train I don't have time for stupid stuff like that the raven haired boy replied. Sakura then answered as well yeah only losers would try and do something like that instead of training, hey Sasuke want to go get something to eat with me so we can work on our teamwork. Everyone left in the room sweat dropped. Uwak then Naruto said as he waited a few minutes before walking out. He walked past a crying Sakura who had apparently got shot down from Sasuke for the millionth time, she's so screwed when she goes on her first real mission, Naruto thought out loud. Surprisingly enough Aruka and some other teachers who were outside muttered their agreement. Once everyone had gotten back to class and then picked up by their senseis, well all but one team. Asuma, Kurinai and the other Jounin sent pitying glances over to where Team 7 was sitting before continuing on with their teams. Naruto just decided to pull out a new jutsu scroll for fire jutsu that he was working on, Sasu continued his favorite pastime watching the paint peel while brooding, Sakura continued going back and forth between fuming and pacing, and then back to just staring drooling at Sasuke. Three hours later a certain silver-haired Jounin walked in. Theme 7. He asked already knowing the answer. You're late. Screeched the fangirl. Everyone but Naruto winced at the screeching, he knew to start wearing earplugs, now that Sakura was on his team, good thing huh? Naruto just stared impassively at him going through the information in his mind he had on him and then sizing him up. My first impression of you well Pinky's annoying, duck butt is boring, batty blondie is actually using his time correctly, so I like one of you can you guess who? Asked the Cyclops. Meet me up on the roof in five minutes, don't be late, Jana, hypocrite was the universal thought in the room. Naruto just shunshined up to the roof much to Sasuke's annoyance and Sakura's confusion. Akashi was sitting there for only about a second or two before he saw Naruto appear in a puff of smoke. So he already knows Shunshin, huh? I wonder how strong he really is if he's been trained by someone like Danzo for seven years. I shouldn't underestimate him. Well good for you Naruto you got here first, and your prize is more waiting for people isn't this great. The mask Jounin asked with an eye smile. Naruto just stared at him, that eye smile was creeping him out before sitting down. That's not even worth responding to. Five minutes later Sasuke and a breathing hard Sakura walked up the stairs. Why are you breathing so hard? Haven't you actually trained before? Questioned the Jinchuriki. Sakura twitched and said of course I have. Naruto smirked stalking Sasuke doesn't count. Said Ichiha and Kakashi cringed. Sakura grinned sheepishly ah well I ah thought about it. Useless fangirl all three guys muttered before getting comfortable. Well then now that we are all here let's introduce ourselves let's say our name, likes, dislikes and dreams for the future. The copy nin stated. What do you mean sensei how about you show us how it's done replied Sakura. What is there not to understand? He just told us what to do in the most simple way possible, Naruto said while groaning. Here let me show you if you're too stupid to do it, Ayan sorry if I'm bashing Sakura too much, but it's just so much fun, my name is Yuzumaki Naruto, I like learning new jutsu, training, and giving a good butt whoop in to someone who deserves it. I dislike arrogant jerks who think they're king of the world, fangirls, people who underestimate me, and people who can't tell the difference between the jailer and the prisoner. My dream for the future is to become a famous ninja rivaling the Hokages. 
The Kashi nodded, then pointed at Sasu Duck but go ahead. Naruto smirked while Sasuke and Sakura twitched. HN. My name's Ichiha Sasuke, I don't really like anything other than getting stronger, I dislike useless people, and I don't have a dream, but I have a goal, and it is to kill a certain man. Sakura stared at him with stars in her eyes, as if he was the most awesome person in existence, while Kakashi sighed while Naruto snorted before speaking. Please do you really think you can ever stand chance against someone like Itachi? He was in Anbu at our age while well, you are just a gen and you can't expect to kill him, unless he has some freaky incurable illness, and if he was actually letting you kill him. A and highly improbable right? Sasuke turned to him in a rage shut up dub. But before he could continue on Kakashi silenced him. Anyway. It's Pinky the fangirl's turn now. Sakura shook out of her thoughts wondering who Itachi was, and then started well my name is Haruno Sakura, my likes are, well the person I like is looks at Sasuke and blushes. My dislikes are Eno Pig, and my dream for the future is looks at Sasuke and blushes heavier. You just imagined yourself and Sasuke team surrounded by pink-haired kids didn't you? Naruto questioned before Sakura turned away to hide her blush and Sasuke cringed again. The Kashi just sighed harder than the last time before speaking okay well meet me tomorrow at training ground 7 at 5 them, so we can have our real graduation test. Sakura screeched what real graduation test? We already took our test at the academy. Naruto groaned before responding do you really think that that test was our final test before we became shinobi? How in the crap did you get the top scores in academics? That test was just to take out all of the hopeless cases, but apparently it forgot one or the academy standards are really that low. Sakura twitched and was about to do something before Kakashi interrupted them. That's correct Naruto, now make sure you don't eat anything otherwise you'll puke, Jana. Naruto looked at both of his teammates and then spoke, we should come up with some sort of strategy for tomorrow, he's a seasoned Jounin, so we have no chance at beating whatever he has in store for us if we go it alone. I don't like this any more than you do, but I'm willing to put aside my differences for the good of the team. So are you guys in. Sasuke thought for a millisecond and then responded please I am an Achiha the only one who can defeat an Achiha is an Achiha I don't need your help. Sakura I'm in yeah he doesn't need any of your help you'll just slow him down. Naruto sighed really Sasuke, do you not remember any of the times I defeated you, and I'm pretty dang sure I'm not an Achiha, and Sakura look who's talking, you're the weakest link, you'll die on your first real mission, and to top it all off you haven't even trained a day in your life. Sakura just ignored his words as she had all the other times she heard it from Aruka and their other teachers. Sasuke actually chimed in this time Yuzumaki is actually right, if you have the time to waste trying to make the neon kill me sign you call hair look pretty, you could actually spend it training. Sakura actually heard him this time and then promptly went into the fetal position and burst into tears. So useless both Sasuke and Naruto thought before leaving. The next morning Naruto arrived at the training field to see both Sasuke and Sakura there already he walked up and he saw Sakura pestering Sasuke for a date every two seconds, apparently Sasuke's words had little to no effect on her. He then heard both of their stomachs grumbling and then he smirked. You two actually didn't eat. Are you really that dumb? We need food to have energy for whatever sensei has planned what good are you starving? Well to Sakura it makes no difference, and I expected this, Sasu come on don't tell me the almighty Ichiha fell for it too. Oh well sensei won't be here for at least another 3 hours, so I might as well make use of my time. After that Naruto then started performing his katas for both Tujutsu and Kinjutsu, while Sasu and Sakura were still looking down in embarrassment. 3 hours later on the dot Kakashi showed up. Sakura was about to use her inhuman lungs to scream about how he was late before she fell to her knees from the killing intent released by Naruto. Don't you dare start screeching again I didn't bring my earplugs and I don't feel like having to hear your annoying voice right now. Um okay then well now that I'm here we can begin as he pulled out two bells, your objective is to get these bells from me before noon, this test has a 66% of failure, so you guys will probably fail. Ready? Begin. Kakashi stated before all three genin disappeared. Naruto was hiding behind a group of trees scanning the forest for his two teammates, he quickly spotted Sakura hiding under a bush. Geez how on earth did she get the top scores in the class again? That's the dumbest thing I've ever seen she's wearing bright red and has neon pink hair, seriously who does that? The shun shined over to where she was and proceeded to cover her mouth before she started her screeching. Sakura it's only me Naruto, just stay calm and shut up he whispered. Sakura nodded, and then Naruto released her and then continued, I'll say the same thing I told you yesterday, the only way we can manage to get the two bells is if we work together. I don't exactly feel like going against an elite jounin like Kakashi and then getting sent back to the academy right now do you? So are you in or out? Sakura pondered this for a second before responding in her usual screeching voice no way. I don't want your help besides Sasuke-kun will save me if something happens to me. 
Naruto groaned and then hissed you moron, you just gave away our posit. Well well well, you rejected working as a team Sakura, and then you gave away you and your comrades position. I don't think you're getting any points for teamwork. But let's begin, lesson 1. Jinjutsu. Meijin. Hell viewing technique Kakashi said while reading his book atop a tree branch. Naruto quickly dispelled the illusion, but cringed when he heard Sakura start screaming. Okay this is just really really sad, why oh why couldn't I get a useful Kinoichi teammate? The blonde Jinchuriki said shaking his head before looking at Kakashi and speaking don't worry I'll be back to face you and take those bells, I just want to see if I'll have better luck with my other teammate first, have fun with your book. The Kashi I smiled and then waved K good luck, I'm glad someone has the right idea, I mean what kind of moron would attack a Jounin head on without any kind plan or surprise. Probably the kind that wears bright orange and screams about becoming Hokage while dreaming about Raymond, but I'm so glad we don't have any of those around here. Naruto said before using a body flicker to go where he saw Sasuke. Naruto appeared right in front of Sasuke making him jump, well at least he didn't scream, although that could have been some good blackmail. Oh well let's see if I have better luck this time. What do you want Yuzumaki? Sasuke whispered. The same thing I wanted yesterday team, for us to work together against the All Cyclops. I can't beat him by myself, and if all our fights were any indication you know you are worse than me by a lot, so you know you don't stand any kind of chance against him. So if we work together we have a slightly better chance of getting the bells. The root member stated. Sasuke didn't even bother thinking about it before responding in typical Ichiha style, no way I am an Ichiha elite, he has no chance against a prodigy like me. Do you even know who we are fighting? He's the Sharingan no Kakashi he was graduated at 5, Junin at 6, and then became a Jounin at 13, well you're only a Genin at 12. He's the prime example for prodigies everywhere, so let me just tell you that you have even worse chance than I do, so are you gonna come or not? The Kakashi was standing above them in the tree listening to their conversation, hiding his chakra signature and making sure he wouldn't be seen. How does he know about all that? Sure it'd be common knowledge for a Genin if he actually tried to find this all out, but still. Sasuke had started paying attention when he heard Kakashi's nickname, but then shrugged it off before responding I told you I don't need any of your help Yuzumaki back off. Kakashi sighed before coming down from his place as Naruto the only one here that actually wants to work together. Sasuke quickly scattered to get away, he may be proud, but he's not that dumb to actually try and attack a Jounin without any kind of plan or trap like that. Naruto just groaned before speaking yeah apparently so, oh well might as well get started. He then dispersed signifying he was a clone. Smarty knew that I could find him easily, so he switched with a clone so that he could hide Kakashi thought to himself before jumping back to avoid a flurry of shuriken aimed at him. The second he hit the ground however he felt two pairs of arms on each of his legs holding him in place. He then saw four Naruto's on both sides of him finish making hand seals and then shouting Katen. Grand Fireball Jutsu Futen. Great breakthrough. Seeing two powered up fireballs coming from both sides, he quickly made a seal less Kawarimi and then had to duck under a Fuiten enhanced slash of Naruto's Wakizashi. He came back up with an uppercut aimed at Naruto's ribs, while Naruto used the force of his strike to make him continue on spinning out of the way. Naruto then sheathed his blade and then made five shadow clones and then called out his Jutsu Fuiten. Wind Drills. The Kashi watched as drills of wind appeared upon each Naruto's arms, he quickly made a seal less shadow clone before jumping back to watch what the happenings. All of the Naruto's rushed upon the clone from all sides, giving it a hard time trying to dodge. For dodging was the only thing it could really do for if he tried to block one of those deadly punches it'd be missing an arm and then disperse. After a minute of this Naruto and company managed to disperse the clone. He then turned to Kakashi and had his clone scatter to be used for Kawarimi purposes just in case. Naruto proceeded to throw a pair of kunai at Kakashi, with one being right above the other. Kakashi lazily watched and noticed that they would end up going a little high and then dismissed them before looking at Naruto to taunt. Are you getting too tired to aim right Naruto? He was surprised when Naruto just smirked and then twitched one of his fingers, indicating that one of them was attached with wire. The one below tilted up and the struck the top kunai, making the top kunai go straight down aimed at Kakashi's head. Well the bottom one just started falling behind Kakashi's head. Kakashi still easily caught at the one aimed at his face before he could say anything however Naruto disappeared and a kunai appeared where Naruto had been standing. Oh crap. Kakashi thought before leaping forward out of the way he didn't get away unscathed however. Naruto slashed across his back and managed to get his arm while the kunai Kakashi had caught transformed back into one of Naruto's clones which then proceeded to slash at the wires of the bells. The original Naruto then proceeded to grab the bells and then Kawarimi with a clone. He really is his father's son to come up with a simplified version of the Horation. Kakashi pondered. Well I knew I couldn't defeat you in a straight fight, but snatch a couple of bells, no sweat, Naruto said smirking. 
Both Sasuke and Sakura who had woken up watched in awe how Naruto easily managed to get the bells from Kakashi. Naruto tossed a bell back to Kakashi I only need one bell right. So I might as well give the others some kind of chance to pass, so I'll just be enjoying the show. Jana, Kakashi reattached the bell and then used a low-level medical ninjutsu to heal his arm. Well he easily passes, he definitely figured out the teammate part down and then still managed to get a bell from me. But it won't matter if the others don't get it. Sasuke then appeared before Kakashi, confident that he could also get a bell from him. If that loser can get a bell so can I, you shall know the might of the great Ichiha clan. What clan? Aren't you always preening about being the last loyal Ichiha? If they are so great they should be alive and not be killed by one man. Naruto shouted from his spot up in the trees. Shut up Yuzumaki. Well anyway I'm not like those other two I'll easily defeat you and take the bells. Sasuke said while adding a couple more feet to that already 50 foot pole in his butt. Oh I'm sorry did you say something? This is my favorite part said the cyclops while turning a page in his book. Stop mocking me, you will fear the power of the Achiha and bow before me. Sasuke screeched much like a certain fangirl watching the happenings. You know this is kinda why Naruto is my favorite right now, he's the only one on this team not causing some kinda damage to my ears and plus he doesn't spend 10 minutes before a fight talking. Kakashi stated before trying to take out the ringing in his ears. Fine then here I come. Sasu charged throwing a couple of kunai in hopes of distracting him before he reached Kakashi. Kakashi lazily moved out of the not wanting to take any chances after what happened with Naruto before calling out lesson 2 to Jutsu. Sasu reached him and jumped into the air and coming down with a kick and his heel aimed at Kakashi's temple. Kakashi leaned bent over backwards with his hand supporting him and then promptly kicked Sasuke in the middle of his back, sending him flying up into the air. Kakashi disappeared and then reappeared right above Sasu aiming both feet at Sasuke's stomach. Sasuke had no chance of dodging and was slammed back into the ground while coughing up blood. Kakashi landed next to him tossing three kunai in a triangle surrounding Sasuke and then stated out one last time lesson three. Ninjutsu then finished the hand signs and then called out the jutsu name. Raiden. Static barrier. Sakura and Naruto watched as Sasuke was then enclosed in three walls of lightning. Well that was fail, Sasuke really should have accepted my help, oh well his loss. Naruto said chuckling. They were then interrupted by the clock going off signaling the end of the test. Five minutes later, why am I the one tied up to the post? Sakura screeched after Kakashi finished the last knot. Well you did absolutely nothing other than look around for Sasuke, reject all of Naruto's offers for help, and then promptly fall victim to a simple E-rank Jinjutsu. Kakashi said while grinning not that they could tell under his mask. Well anyway Naruto is the only one who passes while you both will be sent to the academy, he was the only one to retrieve a bell, and also he was the only one to find out the real purpose of this test and actually attempt to work with you too. Can any of you guess the real meaning of this test? The copy nin asked. Sakura and Sasuke just shook their heads, indicating they didn't know before looking at Naruto in hopes he would tell them. Naruto just sighed the whole point is teamwork, why else would there only be two bells, to make us set aside our differences and work together to attempt to get the bells, was that so hard? Sasuke and his loyal fangirl had the decency to look away before Kakashi spoke. That's correct Naruto, now I will give you both one more chance to get this last bell after lunch, now don't give Sakura any. The Jounin then shunshined off a distance away to see what they would do, Sasuke looked around and then handed some food over to where Sakura was. But Sasuke-kun, if you give me that sensei might fail you, I'll be fine. Sakura said with worry in her eyes. But apparently Sakura's stomach thought otherwise and started grumbling, Sasuke then spoke eat it, you're completely useless if you don't have any strength, you need to eat. If you say so Sasuke Sakura said smiling he cares about me, take that Eno pig. She then took a bite, but then choked when she saw Kakashi appear with an angry look on his face and lightning magically appearing out of nowhere and thunder rumbling menacingly. I told you not to give her any food. Why did you disobey me? Kakashi questioned. Because she's my teammate and she'd be of no use starving, I may dislike her, but I know I'm going to need her if I'm to try to get that bell again. Sasuke stated. Well then, you both. Pass Kakashi said with an eye smile at the end and a thumbs up sign. Wait what? We pass. How come? Sakura yelled. Because as I said earlier the whole point of this test was teamwork, I needed to see if you were willing to break the rules in order to help your teammates. Remember this those who break the rules are considered trash, but those who abandon their teammates are even worse than trash. The Sharingan wielding Jounin said with a somber mood at the end. Well anyway from now on we shall be taking missions as Team 7, report here tomorrow at 7 for our first team meeting and our first mission. John Kakashi then shunshined away to go give his report. Naruto looked over to where his teammates were sitting well now that we passed how about we go out to celebrate my treat. He ch no, this doesn't change a thing I don't have time for this, I still need to get stronger. Sasuke said. 
Sakura then proceeded to ask for another date for the umpteenth time oh I see you turned him down so you could have some alone time with me and go on a date. Sasuke didn't even bother looking at her and start walking away not on your life. Naruto just sighed groaned for the millionth time today you guys won't ever change I see, oh well I tried. Then proceeded to shunshin away. Saratobi took a puff of his pipe and then went on to the next team, since Kakashi as usual isn't here yet, let's let Kurinai go next. Kurinai stepped up and then stated teammate passed. Saratobi nodded expecting this and then went on to Asuma's team. Asuma stepped forward and stated team 10 passed, but we're gonna need a ton of motivation to make them a fighting force. Saratobi nodded and then watched as Kakashi came in with a puff of smoke. Ah, Kakashi right on time, well for you anyway, how did your team fare? The wise and Hokage asked. Everyone just started getting ready to leave expecting to hear how his team failed again. Kakashi nodded and started team 7 passed. This caused most of the Jounin to start yelling Kai in earnest, thinking this was all a lie. Kakashi faked hurt oh come on this isn't that big of a shock is it? I'm not some kind of lazy sensei who fails people for the fun of it, so I don't have to work. Everyone just rolled their eyes disbelievingly. Well that will be all then, send the written reports in sometime tomorrow dismissed. Saratobi called out watching the Jounin leave the room. You may come out now Danzo said the Sandame. Danzo stepped out from the shadows and then spoke well it seems I win my little wager and I'm sure you've seen the real gap of differences between Naruto and Sasuke by now. So it's an ideal time for you to keep your end of the bargain before classes start up again. Saratobi nodded before answering yes I will keep it after watching the fights of our so-called Kanoichi in the graduation test, I believe for sure that we need to make some serious changes to our curriculum. But well I'll be off then here's the list of changes that you must go through before submitting, enjoy the paperwork Danzo said with a smirk. Hiruzen cringed when he saw the large stack of papers placed before him, I bet you're so loving that Taburama sensei didn't pick you for Hokage right now. I sure am, enjoy said the mummy looking man before walking out. The next morning Naruto got there at the training grounds at 6 o'clock and then proceeded to start training with his jutsu until his teammates arrived so they wouldn't see all of his tricks. After his teammates got there Sasuke proceeded to brood and Sakura sat as close to Sasuke as possible without actually touching him and just staring at him again. Naruto just started his physical training with his clones off in the forest, still working on more jutsu from the scrolls given to him by Danzo. Three hours later, Yo said Kakashi with a wave. Sakura went up to yell at Kakashi, but no sound came out. They all looked around in confusion until they saw Naruto smirking while having a hand in a half-tiger seal. Yeah I kinda put a silencing seal on her that's remote activated pretty handy right? Naruto said with a grin. Very very handy Naruto, now I don't have to worry so much about hearing loss. The silver haired Jounin said with an eye smile. Sasuke muttered his agreement while Sakura was fuming. Well anyway now that we're all here we may go to the Hokage's office for our first mission let's head out. Kakashi stated before starting to walk in that direction. Sakura and Sasuke started following him while Naruto, having heard about the D-rank missions, made a shadow clone and sent it after them while he decided to continue training. Have fun guys, I just hope I put enough chakra into that clone, I don't want him getting destroyed or anything that'd be bad. Naruto thought to himself chuckling. Three weeks later, Naruto clone and company were standing inside the mission room having just turned in their last mission and awaiting their next one. Well let's see we have painting some fences, babysitting, ooh and cleaning out the Inuzuka kennels again. Hiroka said with a pitying look at the genin. Sakura couldn't take it anymore and yelled out, that is it. No more of these D-rank missions, we need something that challenges us, how else are we going to improve? How about training for once? Naruto muttered while everyone chuckled. Now now, you three are only newly promoted genin, you have to get more experience before you can do anything for real. You aren't ready yet. Hiroka stated. Um no offense Hiroka, but how exactly is cleaning kennels experience for real missions? I mean I can understand babysitting and chasing Tora because those can be attributed to guarding a client and then chasing down a target, but still we could have done all of these in the academy, when are you guys gonna finish changing this up? Naruto asked keeping his frustrated emotions restrained. Well those are two build teamwork of course, you need to learn to split tasks and such and we are still working on that, but it takes time. Hiruka said matter of factly. Teamwork. Do you see who I have to work with? These two won't work with me even if it saved their lives. Naruto said while shaking his head. Well then that's why we should keep on giving you these then, you just sealed your own fate, one of the other mission givers said with a smirk. Now now, I believe Team 7 has made a good enough point, it seems that these D-rank missions aren't enough for them to put aside their differences and work as a team, maybe a C-rank will suffice to help them out. Said Siratobi. Yes. Finally. Cheered Sakura while Naruto and Sasuke smirked, Kakashi just groaned inwardly, he would actually have to do some work now. Alright, send in Tazuna. Saratobi called out. 
Then walked an old man holding a bottle of booze and smelling worse than the bottle. Your mission is to guard Tazuna here to his country and Nami no Kuni, and then guard him until he has completed building his bridge. Hiruzen said while reading off the mission scroll. This group of brats are the ones going to protect me. The blonde one actually looks ready, armed to the teeth as he is, but what kind of brain damaged idiot tries to be a ninja while having pink hair? Tazuna questioned while slurring his words. Everyone but Sakura started chuckling, and Kakashi restrained Sakura to prevent her from harming the old man, who was probably the only person Sakura could actually win a fight against. Alright everyone meet me at the front gate in 20 minutes so we can leave. Don't be late now, later said Kakashi. All Naruto had to do to get ready was place his food and extra clothes into a ceiling scroll, and he was all set to go. He placed a bunch of clones back to the training ground to continue practicing Fuinjutsu among other things, he actually had been taking to it really easily. Anzo had insisted that he try it a couple years ago, and since then Naruto had been creating tons of new seals and been getting better at it. Naruto was the last one to arrive at the gate, and he was shocked to see Kakashi there already, and started yelling out Kai over and over, but Kakashi just scratched the back of his head, and I smiled. Don't you know how rude it is to be late Naruto? I'm sorry guys I got lost on the road of life Naruto said with a smirk. Ah, touche Kakashi said with an eye smile. Alright guys now that Naruto has arrived we may leave form up and let's go. Hi sensei the three replied. Naruto was in front with Sakura and Sasuke on both sides, Kakashi in the back and Tazuna in the center. After a few hours of walking Naruto spotted a puddle, which was odd since it hadn't drained in a while, and then reasoned it was enemy shinobi. He glanced at Kakashi, who nodded, and then made hand signals behind his back so that Sasuke and Sakura could be aware, they then nodded as well. A few seconds after they had passed by the puddle the two mercenaries rose up and then wrapped around Kakashi with their chains ripping him apart. Only Tazuna was surprised by this, to the three squad mates, this was all a part of the plan. Sakura and Sasuke quickly stood in front of Tazuna, while Naruto drew his blade and charged and created a seal less shadow clone. They both charged before blurring out of existence, both of the Chunin had their eyes widened in surprise before that had their hearts pierced through with a Fuitan enhanced blade. Don't you think that was a bit much eh Naruto? Kakashi questioned from his spot up on a tree branch. Yeah you didn't have to kill them. Sakura screeched. Arn didn't make the seal work in time oh well well it's better than them having a chance of escaping, besides we already got the information we needed. They were clearly after Tazuna and we can get simply get the reason why from him. Naruto stated while cleaning off his blade and then sheathing it. Naruto's right, so care to explain yourself Tazuna. Kakashi questioned after Naruto used a quick fire jutsu to get rid of the bodies and then sealed away the heads to get the bounty. Tazuna then went into detail describing how Gato had enslaved his country and how he needed to build the bridge to save it and then didn't have enough money to afford a higher ranked mission. Kakashi processed through the information and then looked at each of his students to which they all nodded. Well you're in luck Tazuna, we'll help keep you safe until you successfully complete your bridge I believe with Naruto and I, we can handle whatever Gato will throw at us don't sweat it. Thank you all so much. Oh and about the money for a higher class mission, once my country is back on its feet, we will send you the amount. Said the old bridge builder, while shaking Kakashi's hand vigorously. You're very welcome now let us continue on, but be on your guard everyone, next time we may be facing a Jounin like myself, not just Chunin Kakashi said seriously. Roger that sensei, alright let's move out everyone Naruto said with a mock salute and then proceeded back to his position in front of Tizuna. This is as far as I can take you Tizuna, good luck the rower said in a hushed voice. Thanks for taking me so far you won't regret it, that bridge will be finished in no time at all. The old bridge builder said with a smile. Okay everyone form up again, be on high alert, it'll be hard to see anything in this mist and this would be the perfect time for an ambush. Kakashi said while getting to his position. Hi sensei said the trio while going to their spots. After about 10 minutes of walking, Naruto sensed something over to their left and quickly threw a kunai over into the bushes. When he went to examine his work all he saw was an extremely frightened white bunny. Naruto Yubaka. You almost killed this poor innocent rabbit. Sakura screeched. Do thing Sakura, one shut up, once again you have given away our position, second, this isn't the right season for this rabbit's fur to be white, which means it's been raised indoors, for substitution purposes perhaps, you should really be more deductive, use that brain of yours behind your huge forehead for once before you speak. Naruto said in a chiding tone. Sakura was about to lash out when he mentioned her big forehead when she was tackled down by Naruto, while hearing Kakashi yelling for them to get down, and then watching a humongous blade sail over their heads before lodging itself into a tree. A large man appeared on top of the blade with bandages on his face and a scratched mist hit I ate. Well well well, Zabuza Mamachi, known as the Kurigakur no Kijin a ranked criminal, didn't expect to see someone like you here. Stated Kakashi before pulling up his headband revealing his Sharingan eye. 
the great Sharingan no Kakashi knows my name, I'm honored, and I get to see the Sharingan for myself, let me kill the old man, and I'll leave you and your bunch of brats alone. Said the sword-wielding ninja. Naruto give him our answer, Sasuke, Sakura stay back to guard Tazuna Kakashi said while preparing for the fight. Naruto just nodded before finishing his hand signs Raiden. John. A large amount of lightning was sent towards Ibuza making him leap out of the way, but was surprised to see it following him. Naruto made six seal less shadow clones and sent them in pairs of two to surround Zabuza, who was still dodging the original's technique. Gu finished their seals and called out Fuyutan. Great Whirlwind Suiton. Water Tornado then called out at the same time Typhoon Water Vortex. Two others waited a few seconds to make sure their technique wouldn't cancel out the other one and then sent in their Jutsu Fuyutan. Tatapa Katen. Kakaku bringing out a powered up fireball. The last two finished the hand signs before calling out their technique Kraton. Lightning Dragon Suiton. Water Dragon Bullet. Before a large dragon arose from the water before being combined with a lightning dragon that came from the air. Dabuza knew that unless he could create a collaboration jutsu in order to cancel out each of those other ones, there would be no real point of using ninjutsu. He tried using a kawarimi to switch himself only to say hi to the giant fireball scorching the place. He used one more kawarimi before he was struck from behind from the rate and enhanced water dragon. He was then slammed into a tree by it and was still twitching from the jutsu after everything cleared. Hey Zabuza. Are you dead yet? Naruto called out cheerfully. All he got was a growl groan and unbearable agonizing pain from Zabuza, Uok let me know when you are. Oh and you, Hunter Nin, come on out. Naruto shouted out looking into a bunch of trees. The Hunter Nin cautiously came out before speaking I thank you for taking down Zabuza for me, I have been tracking him down for quite some time. Well go ahead and do your business I don't care about his bounty, I guess you get the honor of finishing him off, although I did all the work. Naruto said. The hunter nin threw a senbin that pierced the back of Zabuza's neck before jumping down to take the body, hoisting one arm over his shoulder. Well aren't you going to cut off his head or actually kill him, I understand the senbin to the neck so he won't move as you kill him, but aren't you supposed to cut off the head on the spot and then incinerate the body? Naruto questioned while preparing himself for another fight and making hand signals to the others for them to be on guard. I don't feel it necessary to show such things to mere genin, I'm doing it out of respect for your innocence. The hunter nin replied. Please these guys have seen me kill twice in a few seconds, we can take it, or are you unwilling to kill him for some other purpose? The blonde asked. The hunter nin judged his options of escape out of his situation before building up chakra for a shunshin, but stopped when he felt a two pairs of hands grab his ankles and a blade across his throat and watched Kakashi make a strange jutsu that sounded like birds chirping. I ask you a question hunter nin, if you even are one. Must we spill your blood? Naruto questioned while the clone pressed his blade harder into the fake hunter nin's neck and the clones grabbing his ankles channeled lightning chakra into their palms, much to Kakashi's interest, while Haku started having trouble concentrating while being shocked. He then decided to go with a long shot it may end up with his throat slit, but it was worth a shot. He quickly expelled wind chakra from all around him, scattering the clone's lightning chakra and blowing the clone back, although his blade managed to still cut across his throat, nothing dangerous it would just leave a scar for a while. Just as Kakashi was about to reach him having felt him building up his chakra for that wind move the hunter nin had managed to jump back to have time to shunshin out of the way. Well that was fail, we need to work on our capturing methods a little bit maybe some jinjutsu would be nice or something, oh well, let's keep moving Zabuza won't be battle ready for about a week and we need to get these two whipped into shape to help fight this time. The jinchuriki said while sheathing his blade and dispelling the clones. Kakashi nodded while covering his Sharingan eye once more, alright guys let's move out, I want us at Tazuna's home before sunset. Roger that sensei was the trio's reply once more. The next morning after they had arrived and met Tazuna's daughter, Tsunami, Kakashi had woken Sasuke and Sakura and headed out to where he guessed Naruto was already training having gotten up already. As the three arrived they saw Naruto facing off with a clone along the side of the tree at a perfect 90 degree angle, it was as if they were both on normal ground with the ease that they had when moving. Hey Naruto thanks for the demonstration of what I'll be teaching these two, I see you already got it covered to a pretty amazing level, so I think I'll be teaching you something different. Kakashi said once Naruto finished. Sasuke just glared at Naruto for knowing things that he didn't, but then reasoned that since a clan less loser like him knew it, that it was beneath him. HN if Yuzumaki here knows it, I, and Ichiha, shouldn't waste my time with such a pathetic technique, I demand you to teach me something better. Kakashi and Naruto just looked at each other and sweat dropped before Naruto spoke. What makes you think that you being an Ichiha makes you so special? Shouldn't it be a bad thing that you're the only one of your clan left? I mean it must have been a pretty weak clan to have every single member, but you killed in one night by a teenager. 
Sasuke fumed and was about to charge when Naruto in a blur of speed was behind him with a kunai at his neck, you know, I'm pretty sick of your attitude, all the civilians and a bunch of those civilian born shinobi may think that you're hot stuff because of your name, but you know what. Your name means absolutely nothing on a mission when people are willing to kill you, and it means even less to me, I don't give respect for your family, hell I don't even respect a single member of your family except Itachi, who did us all a favor by killing those arrogant pricks who think they are all above us because they've had a leg up above most normal people. Naruto silenced Sakura with a glare right when he assumed that she would try to interject and then continued, if you think that you can order me or Kakashi around like you just you tried to do you've got another thing coming, you need a major lesson in respect and I'll be most delighted to teach. Now go concentrate chakra to your feet and climb up the tree and use a kunai to mark your progress, skedaddle. Naruto promptly kicked him forward while tossing him the kunai, then he and Kakashi shunshined a distance away to practice. Well nice speech and I probably would have done something similar if it was my style. Kakashi said while well, giving a thumbs up. More like too lazy Naruto thought to himself. Kakashi continued well I believe that you have a sufficient concept of teamwork, well more than Sasuke ever will, so I'll be teaching you a very special technique of mine, it's my only original jutsu that I created myself. It's called the CH. Dodori Naruto said simply. What how did you know? Kakashi asked his single visible eye raised. Well you're like a legend in Root, and Chidori is like your signature move, and then there's your even more beastly move the Rikiri. It wasn't that hard to figure out really. The root member replied. Well then I see you already have the basics of lightning manipulation down, so this should be simple then, the hand signs are ox, rabbit, monkey, and kakashi, then went in depth of the concepts of the jutsu, and then went to the drawbacks. There are two drawbacks to this technique, one is the large amount of chakra that is needed to perform it, but that isn't really a problem for someone with your reserves, the second is the most vexing problem, and that is the tunnel vision given with the technique. Because you are moving so fast it's hard to see all the details such as an enemy counterattacking. that's why it's a perfect combination with the Sharingan. So we'll see if we can find some way to work around it. Kakashi finished while in a thinking pose. Well it's a good thing I have the Sharingan already then Naruto replied while showing two Sharingan eyes with three Tomos in each. You have the Sharingan. Kakashi yelled. Well yeah, obviously, now I might as well tell you because I doubt I can get out of this without telling you all about it. Naruto said while motioning for Kakashi to sit down. Alright no comments until after I'm finished, Itachi was ordered by the elders and the Sandame to massacre the Ichiha clan to stop a coup d'etat that they were planning. After it happened Danzo had us all collect the Sharingan eyes so that no one would come and rob them off of the corpses in the grave and said that it'd be a waste just to destroy them all. Now that a lot of stuff about Root is out in the open, I'm sure it won't really matter if I tell you about this, especially since you're such a high-ranking person. Anyway Danzo implanted Sharingan eyes into most of his highest ranking root members myself included. The reason I can activate mine at will is because of Kaiu chans doing, and another bonus is that there's no strain on my body, she takes care of that too, although it's only for me all the other guys that don't have an ancient biju stuck in their gut has the same problem you do. Naruto finished before trying to gauge his sensei's reaction. Well that makes things easier, let's get started the copy nin replied after a few seconds. Wait you don't really seem that shocked about it all the genin responded. Well some of the higher ranking Anbu such as myself knew about the coup d'etat, we just didn't know that Itachi was ordered to get rid of them all. It's just that Itachi wasn't the person to murder his whole entire clan, he abhorred bloodshed so it all makes sense now. Well shall we continue with this technique? The Cyclops questioned. Not quite Naruto made a hand sign that Kakashi recognized well before calling out his technique Taju Cage Bunshin no Jutsu. Kakashi widened his eye in shock seeing 2000 clones standing now I'm ready. Well get to it then I'll go check in on the other two to see how they are doing. Kakashi said before body flickering away. One day later, you know, that's really unfair, only one day and you're already finished with it, and without hand signs no less, it's like you don't even need the Sharingan to copy a technique, if you do this you can master it instead of just copying it. I thought making you learn the Rikiri along with it would slow you down, but knew you just had to charge right through that too. Kakashi said with a mock pout. Naruto just looked sheepish before responding well that's the beauty of having shadow clones help you train, you got any more awesome jutsu to teach me so I can break some more records. The Kashi I smiled I might have a couple here and there, but I have just the one for you, it's called the Rasengan. The Rasengan. As in the fourth Hokage's jutsu. What's next to Horation? Naruto questioned incredulously. How did you know? Nah that's one of the few I'd like to learn how but can't. Kakashi responded before continuing I got the supplies for it while you were out here training, I had a feeling you would be done by the time I got back the first step is to pop a balloon with your chakra like this. Kakashi then demonstrated the actual Rasengan and then the exercise. Naruto then took the balloon concentrated for a second before the balloon exploded and Kakashi just watched in silence. 
What no real reaction? Naruto asks slightly disappointed. After all the things you did the past couple of days, I'm not sure I can be shocked about anything you do anymore. Oh well the next step is to make this rubber ball explode, it's harder because it requires a lot of power. The White Fang Sun said while tossing the rubber ball over to Naruto. Bri to one Kakashi thought to himself blam. Saw that coming. Just take this balloon for the last step and then try to blend the first two steps and contain it inside the balloon. Kakashi said tossing over another balloon. Naruto took it proceeded to concentrate with it and then nothing happened um is something supposed to happen. Nope you got it that's it, if something happened then we would know something was wrong. Well the only thing left to do for you is to start trying to make it bigger and then combine your elements into the Rasengan, you've already completed the manipulation training for fire, wind, and lightning, so you better start there, have fun. Kakashi then left to go and check on the work at the bridge. At night after everyone had regrouped Naruto heard from Sakura that Sasuke had yet to complete it while she bragged about already getting it on her first try and that she had such amazing chakra control. Naruto simply replied, it's very easy to have good chakra control when you have so little chakra and it makes you get tired in about 10 minutes, I'm guessing that's why you only have a couple scratches on you and tears in your clothes. You probably just spent most of the time ogling Sasuke all hot and sweaty, looking so dreamy, shirtless. Sakura then passed out from a nosebleed. Well that was pathetic, I even had more material and yet she always yelled at Kibo about being a pervert and now look at her. Naruto said while shaking his head. Naruto I'm disappointed in you, you didn't warn me I could have taken a photo for proof and what's worse is I got blood in my food now. Kakashi said with a mock pout. Naruto was about to respond when he was interrupted by the little shrimp that lived there. Why do you guys even bother training or even staying here? Gato will just kill you all. You can't beat him. You make Gato seem like some big bad bujiman, he's just some rich short dude that has his henchmen do all of the work for him. We just beat an A-rank missing nin, and unless all shorty has a couple more of those in his back pocket, we won't be having much of a problem. Naruto said while taking a sip of his drink not even bothering to look at the gaki. No more life-changing speeches for today I'm too tired to get all inspired the gaki's not worth it, Kakashi said with a yawn. What did you call me Inari screeched much like a certain pinky laying on the ground. They called you a gaki, gaki. Why don't you just run along and go back to demoralizing the populace while the big boys and girls go kill some people we don't need two useless wastes of space that spend all day crying. The blonde replied thinking of his teammate. Arsh maybe? Tazuna questioned. Not nah, pain makes him stronger, besides it's true, and I really hate useless people, so I may be a bit biased when it comes to these things. The Kenjutsu user replied. A bit. Was the universal thought in the room. Well I'm gonna go train laters, Naruto said while strapping on his gear and heading out. A and I'm not going to have Naruto meet Haku in the forest, I can't really imagine someone disciplined like him just passing out in the middle of the forest. One week later, well today's the day that Zabuza is supposed to attack right? Tazuna questioned. Yep, that's why I ask you to tell your men to have the day off and also to have Naruto have a clone guard the house. Kakashi replied, eyes not leaving his book. Are you sure just one will be enough? Pinky asked. Just one of Naruto's clones is enough to beat both you and Sasuke, I'm sure just one will be enough for a couple of bandits that Gato hired. The former Anbu member said back. Shouldn't you be more supportive of your students? Tazuna asked. Nope, this might help motivate them to actually try, and by them I mean Sakura, Sasuke just needs to learn teamwork. Oh and to stop being emo, that'd be great. Kakashi said while turning another page. Glad to know my purpose to you Kakashi, to make them better. Naruto said with a faux pout. Yep thanks for the help Kakashi replied with an eye smile. Yeah don't sweat it, I hate having useless teammates more than you do, carry on. Naruto said in a chipper voice. After a walking a bit further they started traveling across the bridge, it was already extremely foggy Naruto just called out Fuyutin. Great breakthrough to clear the air. Ah that's much better thank you Naruto it was getting so hard to read with that mist everywhere. Kakashi said with a sigh of relief. Oh it's no problem at all sensei, but anyway let's get the fun started. Naruto replied while motioning for Sasuke and Sakura to get back to protect Azuna again. So you think you can take Zabuza, Kakashi? He'd be a lot tougher opponent for me now because he will not be underestimating me as he did last time. Naruto questioned while loosening up some muscles. Sure I'll take him, it might take some time we know how big of a talker he is. Kakashi said while pulling up his headband. Hey I resent that. Called Zabuza from the other side. You see? Kakashi said glancing at Naruto and pointing over at Zabuza. Their playful banter was interrupted by them being surrounded by ten water clones, which were then quickly dispatched by Sasuke in a burst of speed. Very good Sasuke team now go back to your spot to guard the old guy. Naruto ordered, annoyed that Sasuke felt the need to try and show off. Sasuke begrudgingly headed back, but was forced to dodge off to the side to avoid a flurry of Senban. He then engaged in combat with the hunter Nin from before. 
And that's why I told you to stay back. Naruto yelled out. After watching Sasuke get caught in some ice mirrors he decided it was time to step in. He quickly made a seal less shadow clone and then used their favorite combination attack, after this week of training, he didn't even need to use hand signs for it anymore. They both simultaneously called out Futen. Great breakthrough Kane. Grand fireball jutsu. The combined force easily tore through the one side of mirrors that Naruto was facing, looking inside he saw a porcupine. Oh hey Sasuke why did you let him stick those pointy objects into you? Are you into that? Because that would totally explain why you turned down every single chick that's ever asked you out. Naruto questioned seemingly happy with himself at his great, to him, perverted joke. Would you shut up and help me use Amaki? Sasuke killed out while trying to remove some of the senbon. Aku looked over at Naruto wearily, this is going to be tough, I know this boy can easily defeat me, especially as I am now, and if I try to reconstruct my mirrors, he can quickly destroy them. My chakra I won't last long like this. My best bet is to try and take out his comrade, and he might try to protect him, and there's my opening. Yeah I know real cliche. Aku prepared himself for another attack and launched several senbin over towards Sasuke, who was unprepared to move out of the way. They were on target until Naruto called out Fuerten. Gale Palm. The senbins then flew back into the opposite direction at over three times their original speed. Aku quickly moved back into another mirror that was still there before releasing his jutsu in order to conserve chakra. Aku was trying to formulate a plan to get around the blonde to his partner or just to strike the blonde himself. He quickly then had to jump forward to avoid a slice from one of the blonde's clones. The clone simply pointed his blade at Haku before calling out his technique Fuetin. Wind beam. Instead of just enhancing the blade by about a foot, this one just shot out a beam of wind right towards him. Haku quickly made an ice wall to protect him but knew it would only hold for about a 30 seconds because of his lack of chakra. He then heard a voice calling out another technique from behind the wall. Pain. Laser beam the original finished before combining it with the wind one. Oh I am so dead Haku thought to himself before he was caught in the blast. After the smoke cleared a very bruised and battered Haku with his mask off and scorch marks all over him. Haku weakly tried to stand and complete his mission, but he was past his limit, all he could do was hoarsely speak, please kill me, I am of no use to abuse Asama, as of now I am a broken tool. I am not worth kept alive. Oh don't you dare start going emo, that's what that Porku team is for. Let me guess, you were an orphan, Zabuza took you in and gave you purpose and told you that you were nothing more than a weapon to him. Am I right? Asked Naruto with a somber look. Aku barely managed to nod. Well then we're the same in that area, what needs to happen is for you to get your own purpose and dream and live it. Your world can't constantly revolve around someone else. Because people make mistakes, you sometimes just have to be that person's voice of reason to help them out, not just their loyal puppy who does everything they say. We earned fangirls, wow you're like both my teammates rolled into one now that I think about it, emo yet a fangirl. I'm a guy Haku responded with a sweat drop. Oh then that makes it worse. Oh well don't go anywhere now I better go see how Kakashi's doing. Naruto started walking before he heard the sound of birds chirping and then silence. He called out Hey Zabuzea. Are you dead yet? Silence. Okay. Have fun in the hot place. Body flickering over to Kakashi he saw him pulling down his Sharingan and then resting up for a sec. He then heard the sound of a cane tapping across the cement. Well looks like you guys were too much for this so-called Karigakur no Kijin, how about I double how much you guys were paid for this mission if you let me kill the old bridge builder. Gato offered. Or I could just kill you all and then rob all your money houses and then live the rest of my life as the wealthiest man in the world. But we know that's not gonna happen either, well the last part anyway, I still might take all your money though. Naruto replied with an eye smile reminiscent of Kakashi's. You insolent brat do you really think you can beat all of my men? Gato sneered. Quality over quantity retard, let's put them to the test, I've been wanting to test out some of my more wide scale attacks for a while, this is the perfect opportunity. He quickly made a shadow clone, and then they both performed their hand seals. Hayden. Searing Tsunami Fuetin. Wind Wave. They both called out. Edo and his men all just saw one big huge wall of fire coming down on them with nowhere to run. All Inari and the villagers saw when they arrived was the small army of Gato's thugs be completely incinerated until there was nothing left. After taking out the leftover flames Naruto with a low-rank Suetan Jutsu, he turned around to face them all. A little late to the party don't you think? It was awesome. We had a fog machine, laser beams, electricity flashes, fire, oh yeah and a porcupine. Naruto added with a smile. Shut it Yuzumaki. Sasuke yelled over where Sakura was the D-needle fying him. Tsuum who has to clean all of this up and fix the damage? Kakashi asked nervously. Let's let Sakura do it that way she can say she actually did something on the mission, other than stand next to an old guy looking as threatening as a newborn kitten. Naruto suggested. 
works for me Kakashi said before calling out, hey Sakura you're on cleanup duty. And then make me a sandwich. Naruto chimed in while Kakashi stared. Too much? Naruto asked sheepishly. Kakashi continued staring. Make that two sandwiches. He called out again. That's my favorite student. Kakashi said while patting the top of Naruto's head. One week later, Azuna had finally finished the bridge, it had gone a lot faster though with all of Naruto's clones helping out. But now it was time for Wave's heroes to leave. You know any of you are welcome here anytime, and hopefully next time it will be a pleasure visit and not you guys and I emphasize guys fighting for your lives. Tazuna said with a playful grin looking at Sakura. Don't worry we'll pay a visit or two around here soon, you guys take care now you're here, you too cocky. Naruto said with a smirk at the end looking at Inari. They then started to leave before Inari called out hey the bridge isn't completed, yet we still have to name it. That's right how about the amazing Sasuke-kun bridge Sakura tried. Everyone just stared at her before they all started booing and jeering much to Sasuke's chagrin. Well that was shot down pretty quick. Naruto said with a smirk. How about the great Naruto bridge? Inari tried. The crowd just started cheering. Well that works for me just make sure to put that on a map or something too, having my own landmark, this'll be fun next thing you know they'll be selling Naruto bobbleheads to the people who cross it. Naruto said happily while imagining all the cool stuff that could happen. Sasuke just glared at him, while Naruto gave him a nice guy pose similar to guys minus the whole green spandex and the pythons he calls eyebrows. Two months later, I, had a Kakashi, nominate all three for the Chunin exam. The room exploded in whisperings, an what an oxymoron, and if you don't know what that means look it up. Iruka then called out, now wait just a minute I taught all of these students in the academy, and I know they aren't ready for this. That's just it Iruka, in the academy, you have no idea how far they have come these months since then. Or are just doubting my abilities as an instructor? Kakashi asked, daring him to say so. Well I guess that takes care of that problem then Sirotobi said after taking a drag from his pipe. The past two months had been living hell for Sakura, but it was worth it, and everyone could see the results. Kakashi had forced her to start training with both Guy for Tejutsu and Kurenai for Jinjutsu. She had been improving little by little, Kurenai had been trying to rid of her of her fangirlish tendencies, but to no avail. Sakura also had been taking medical nin classes from the hospital so that she could be prepared for when either of her teammates got injured. Sasuke however had just stuck to his own training for all of the good it did him, practicing on more fire jutsu and shuriken techniques. Naruto had finished learning a lot more jutsu from the scrolls Danzo had given him and had finished the advanced book for Fuin Jutsu. He also had completed the elemental manipulation training for water and earth. These were just some of the things he did in his free time, whenever he could, he would help them prepare for Orochimaru's invasion. All of the Chunin and above especially the Anbu were training to their peak to be prepared. An with the Anbu it's just pathetic how easily they are killed, the Sandane was building up his chakra levels, and he had anti-barrier seals all over the place hearing from Naruto that that was what Orochimaru's guard specialized in. He also had Danzo's root operatives running around the place making it as efficient as possible. To the outside world it would look like a normal thing for the host village to be preparing for the Chunin exams to be taking place, but on the inside it was a whole lot more. That morning they were still waiting for Kakashi to arrive, and by waiting I mean Naruto and Sasuke training, while Sakura laying there on her back staring at Sasuke's butt, much to Kakashi's chagrin when he arrived. You should follow their example Sakura Kakashi said from right next to Sakura's face. She quickly tried to muffle her scream and pretended as if she was trying to do sit-ups. You'll never change will you Sakura? Kakashi said with disappointment. Well would you ever be on time to a team meeting? She countered. Ah, touche Kakashi replied with an eye smile. Well I'm here to give you all the applications for the Chunin exams that start in three days, I'm sure you guys will do great, just be a team, and you guys will be fine. The copy nin said while handing them the application forms. He then continued on be at the academy at 10 at room 301 to turn in your forms and then begin the first of three phases. Have fun Jana. After Kakashi body flickered off it being around noon now after all that waiting they decided to head out for lunch. By the I mean Naruto having given up on trying to go eat with his team, went off to this awesome dango shop where he'd talked to some purple haired hot eye. A and guess who? With Sakura getting shot down once again by Sasuke, it was almost like a practiced scripted routine by now. This time when Naruto arrived he noticed a blonde haired girl with a kumo headband eating a large plate of sushi. He was about to go and order when he saw one of the blonde haired girl's apparent teammate a boy about his age with black hair, start mouthing off to her and was about to strike her when Naruto stepped in and caught it. Dare to explain why you were about to hit a girl let alone your teammate and then worst of all try to strike such a beautiful face. Naruto said while glaring at the boy. Yujito blushed while her teammate, Shin scowled. This is none of your business leaf nin this is between me and the weapon. Weapon? Naruto repeated. 
Yes weapon, now mind your own business before I make you Shin said while preparing to make a move. You are in no position to be making demands of me now sleep Naruto commanded while he spun around the boy and chopping him in the back of the neck, knocking him out and then laying him across several chairs. Care to tell me what this was all about Miss Naruto asked, Yujito. Nah Yujito. And what's your name? Uzumaki Naruto he said with a smile. Hey looky there you found my old friend the Nibi Nibi. I guess she's another Jinchuriki, that explains why he called her a weapon. I also hold number 9 while you hold number 2. So I guess that answers my question as to why your teammate called you a weapon. It's a hard life isn't it? Naruto asked with a somber look at the end. Yujito just looked shocked ever since he mentioned he held the nine tails, this boy just a bit younger than her held the most powerful bijuu in existence, and plus he seemed normal and nice. Cute too Nibi added. Yee, wait what the crap. Well it is true though. Yujito also gained a sad look before responding yes it is, what's worse is everyone practically worships the ground our other Jinchuriki walks on, why lie am the pariah of everyone else. They continued on talking about their lives for a good amount of time, before they heard a young boy's yell that sounded distinctly like a certain scarf wearing gaki. Um excuse me for a minute I need to go bail out some kid out of trouble. Naruto said before body flickering off but was quickly followed by Yujito. He arrived on the scene to see some tranny in a catsuit holding up Konohamaru with his two friends and Sakura standing there asking him to release Konohamaru. I suggest you let him go now before you get hurt and make me spill your blood across the street. Two Naruto said while each holding a blade to the other's throat while well before they could respond a third, in a burst of speed, snatched the kid away and placed him back by his friends while well, Yujito watched in interest. You little punk. I'll make you pay for that he was about to reach for Karasu but was stopped by Naruto kicking his legs out from beneath him. While you're down there, call down your friend over there next to my emo teammate so we can chat. Everyone's eyes widened when they looked over and saw a shocked Sasuke looking over his back to where a boy with red hair and a kanji for love written on his forehead. The boy complied and used a sand shunshun to come down, he then proceeded to apologize for his idiot brother's actions. It's fine it's clear that he has mental issues judging by the way he stole your sister's makeup and wears a catsuit. Naruto replied with a smirk. Ankuro was about to respond when he was stopped by a glare from Gara. He gulped and kept quiet. Wow it's like some kind of reunion we now have the one tails with us as well. Kaiubi stated while yawning. So you hold number one huh? Ain't this something it's like a gathering Yujito over there has number two, while I myself have number nine Naruto added a smidgen of Kaiubi's chakra while he said this to add effect. R and his siblings flinched and took a step back, not used to that kind of power, especially considering they would normally be used to it having been around Gara so much. So you're like me huh? I look forward to proving my existence against you in the Chunin exams. Gara said. Proving your existence. You're standing right there aren't you? And you're definitely talking and breathing. I think you proved you were alive the second you were born don't you think? Naruto questioned. Gara just disregarded that what is your name? I am Yuzumaki Naruto Naruto responded. Gara nodded before saying his own sabaku no Gara. I bet you are wondering about my name too huh? Sasuke said as he butted in. I couldn't care less, although I would also like your name, Kumonin. Gara said while looking over in Yujito's direction. Nai Yujito she replied simply. Gara and company then walked off before Konohamaru and his friends took off as well. Sasuke was fuming about being ignored like he was nothing again. Well that's that, shall we continue where we left off come on I'll treat you to some more sushi. Naruto asked while reaching out his arm so Yujito could interlock her arm with it. Are you asking me out on a date? She questioned cautiously not used to having a guy ask her out without devious intentions. I sure am, so do you want to come? Naruto asked. I would like that Naruto said the Nibi Jinchuriki while placing her arm around his. Naruto had arrived at the academy for the first phase of the exams at about 9.15 in order to scope out the competition, not that he expected much from Genin. He only had to wait a couple minutes before Sasuke and then Sakura arrived. Alright guys, I'm expecting them to be attempting to get rid of as many teams as possible to only leave the best of the best, so if you say anything that looks like a way to get rid of some weaklings, don't go shouting about it just keep going, it's less competition for us and we won't have to worry as much. Got it. Naruto said while looking at Sasuke's and saying the word don't. HN fine was Sasuke's reply having long learned over these months that if he disobeyed any of Naruto's orders, he would be in a world of inhuman pain. Then Naruto would unlock Sasuke's doors and let the fangirls in while Sasuke couldn't move to get away. Sakura just nodded and then double-checked her gear. After walking up the first set of stairs, they quickly noticed a bunch of genin all lounging around here, while two genin were blocking the doors to room 201, which was under Jinjutsu to look like 301. They just quickly snuck past everyone while trying not to draw attention to themselves, which was really hard for someone with pink hair. 
they were passing through one of the academy's many training floors when they were greeted by a ninja in green spandex that Naruto and Sakura knew was from Team Guy. Ichiha Sasuke, I am Rock Lee, having heard from Sakura during our training how you were a genius from the Ichiha clan, I wish to test my strength against yours to prove that hard work outweighs natural born talent. You know who I am and yet you still challenge me. You must be as dumb as you look. Sasuke said confident of his superiority. And we all know how well that turns out given his spars with Naruto. Don't underestimate him Sasuke-kun he is very strong, I have trained with him many times these past two months. Sakura said with worry in her eyes. HN he is still no match for an Ichiha Sasuke said while getting into his stance. Lee then got into his Gokin stance you may attack first Sasuke. What happened hereafter was one of the most one-sided battles Sasuke ever fraught aside his spars with Naruto. Right when Lee was about to finish him with the Lotus, he was stopped by his sensei's summon and then was greeted by Guy himself. Hey super bushy brow sensei. Naruto called out after Guy finished his ridiculous pose. Yash Naruto-kun, it's good to see you again my youthful comrade, I see that your teammate has suffered a major loss in his flames of youth, shall I try to extinguish his bright flames once more? Guy yelled out in his usual loud voice. Sakura understood what he meant after spending so much time around him, while Sasuke blanched while Lee started talking in a similar fashion I lost to such a loser. Oh by the way how did your last glorious battle with Kakashi go? Naruto called out after Guy and Lee once more finished their rant of helping them revive Sasuke's flames of youth. Yosh. I lost to Kakashi in the most youthful strategic game of rock, paper, scissors. I then completed my punishment for my loss, but now I'm all ready for the next challenge, and I shall defeat Kakashi this time. Guy called out with flames in his eyes. Well have fun with that, well we better keep going, don't want to be late for the exams now. Oh and I think Sasuke deserves a hug to help rejuvenate his extinguished flames of youth. Naruto replied with a smirk. Sasuke looked confused until he saw the gleam in both Guy and Lee's eyes, before he was caught in the center of Guy's infamous sunset beach in Jutsu. Kakashi could hear Sasuke's screams from where he was standing while watching Naruto and Sakura walk up. That's just plain mean Naruto, you could at least wait until the exams are over to plant such horror into a mere 12 year old boy. Nah he'll be fine besides pain's good, it's how we grow. Naruto said while making a couple of shadow clones and then hinging them into flies that placed themselves on his shoulders just in case. Sasuke arrived a minute later who was still mumbling things about green, youth, and eyebrows. Oh I'm glad you could join us Sasuke, I was afraid you wimped out or something after seeing the competition. Naruto said while chuckling. Sasuke shook out of his stupor to just glare at Naruto I really, really hate you. Oh, I hate you too Sasuke, I'm glad we've come to an agreement. Naruto replied with a smile and a thumbs up. Well we better head on inside now, so long Kaka sensei. After that they all walked in to see everyone glaring at them trying to unnerve them, Naruto shrugged it off while Sasuke flinched and Sakura started trembling. In their momentary distraction, Sasuke was jumped from behind by the runner-up for most useless female in the world Yamanaka Ino. Oh Sasuke-kun I've missed you so much I was afraid you weren't going to make it. Ino said while squeezing as hard as she could. Um Ino we see each other once a week with the other rookie nine and we already told you that we were going to the Chunin exams, did you just have no other excuse other than a useless fangirl desire to touch him Naruto blanched. Ino looked like she wanted to kill Naruto but just stayed in place having her last attempts end in complete failure with her usually unconscious and that wouldn't be good to have happen right now in the middle of the Chunin exams. Hey guys I was afraid you chickened out or something yelled out Kiba with a resounding R from Akimaru. Do you have an off button? Or could you at least turn it down, we already are drawing enough attention to ourselves we don't need you to make it worse. The blonde Jinchuriki said groaning. Kiba just growled before they were interrupted by a ninja with silver hair and glasses walked up, your blonde friend is correct, this isn't some field trip, everyone's tense and nervous from these exams, can't you read the mood? But what can I say your rookies, a little wet behind the ears, so don't worry we'll make sure to initiate you guys in just fine. I'm sorry but who are you? Naruto questioned well if it isn't Oropito's right hand man it's been a while since I've seen him, plus the whole scent of snakes and chemicals is a dead giveaway. Oh pardon my manners, my name is Yakushi Kabuto, a veteran of sorts of these exams, this will be my seventh try, and these exams are twice a year. Kabuto responded while scratching the back of his head. Wow you must suck. Kiba said while laughing trying to make up for his earlier embarrassment. Or the exams are really just that hard, use your head Kiba, if he sucked he'd be dead, if he was simply a coward, why bother trying so many times? Is your head just empty or something no wonder it was so easy for you to learn how to understand dogs, because you're as dumb as one. Naruto quipped. Why you? Kiba was restrained from attacking by a hand from Shino was motioning him not to go. Once again you were correct Naruto-kun Kabuto said with a smile. I think I'll decide to help you newbies out. 
After he said this he pulled out a large deck of cards, then he proceeded to input his chakra into them, causing it to show a diagram of all the ninja villages and the amount of ninjas each village sent. So do you have any requests for information on the combatants, Sasuke then requested, Rock Lee, Sabaku no Gara, and Yuzumaki Naruto. All you want to know about me, I thought I told you I don't swing that way Sasuke, besides I'm sure that there are plenty of other guys around maybe some pale-faced guy with girly long hair I don't know. Naruto said with a smirk. Somewhere in Konoha a certain snake san and sneezed nearly blowing his cover. Shut up Yuzumaki. Sasuke yelled while turning his head away to hide his blush, which only made him get nuzzled even further by Ino, before he tossed her off into a corner. You know you're not really helping your case to prove you're straight by throwing off another one of your fangirls. Naruto replied. Anyway the first Rock Lee, a and we all have heard this so many times I might as well skip to Naruto's, next Yuzumaki Naruto, he has completed 120D rank missions, and wow these are only recently changed, but it says that he has completed 10B rank, 17A rank and 8S rank missions. It says his sensei is Kakashi Haddock, while his two teammates are Ichiha Sasuke and Haruno Sakura. Although for the past seven years he has been trained by new Anbu commander Danzo and his elite root squad, which is where he accomplished all of these high-up missions, except for one of the air ranks which was a C-turned air rank. He performed most of those missions solo, he is definitely Anbu level in everything but rank. What's a guy like you doing here as a genin? The Budo questioned with an incredulous look in his eyes. Well that proves it, he's definitely a spy, only Jown in rank and higher are privy to that information, and he definitely isn't one, and now a ton of genin all know. Well that's obvious, to show Kanoha's strength of course, it would kind of be a waste to put me straight into Anbu, so why not bring in more missions and popularity into Kanoha by showing how strong only its genin are. Naruto replied nonchalantly. Just about all of the other genin in the room took an unconscious step back hearing how strong this unassuming blonde was, while Sasuke was fuming once more hearing how strong his teammate was. He's already an Anbu at the same age as Itachi was, am I really so far behind? Wow kitten you sure picked a good one Nibi said while licking its paws. I sure did, after these exams I'll just have to take him out on another date. Yujita replied back. Oh that's no fun you didn't even bother denying, there goes my entertainment. Nibi responded with a pout. Well what's the point of hiding it, you can read my mind and you know what my feelings are. An and it's way overused I'll see how this turns out. Well it seems we have quite a few talented teams of gen in this year, yours, that sand team, almost every village sent some excellent shinobi, although the sound could only send one team being the small country it is said the glasses wearing ninja. A few seconds later he was forced to dodge three kunai thrown by a ninja of the sound wearing a scarf and with a face mask similar to the nidames. As the mummy looking one was charging it was greeted by a iron knuckled fist, courtesy of Naruto square in the face, while Zaku was kicked back into a couple of desks on Naruto's follow up attack, while Naruto put a blade to their final teammate's neck before she could move to intercept him. It would be wise not to go around trying to attack leaf genin in the presence of their comrades, we look after our own. Naruto shouted out so all could hear before striking her in the back of the neck. Alright you maggots eyes up here and shut up, and you blondie with a blade on his back, mind telling me why there are three collapsed sound in around you? Ibiki shouted while flanked by about 20 chunin. Well first of all they can't take a punch which is kind of why they are all collapsed, and second they were about to attack a fellow leaf ninja Naruto responded while putting away his kunai. Sort of he added mentally. Well okay then carry on Gaki just clean up the mess and get some smelling salts to revive them, replied Ibiki in a carefree attitude, he's like the blonde since he met him with Anko in the dango shop. Now everyone else grab a number and then sit down in the corresponding seat, wait until we give each of you a test, and then wait for the instructions. Ibiki then added. After everyone had then taken their seats with Naruto sitting next to some other leaf genin, and with Hinata on his right after that they were then given the instructions by Ibiki, then started. He sent a mental command to his clones in disguise to find the person who would undoubtedly have all of the answers on any written test i.e. Sakura what does she like live in the library reading about everything except how not to be a useless fangirl. He thought to himself. He quickly finished the test after getting all of the answers from Sakura after his clones dispersed. He turned over his page and looked around the room and watched the various people cheat and the stupid ones getting caught. It seems the Chunin in the room are letting slide some of the less obvious methods, although I'm not quite sure why they are letting a completely unconscious Ino who they all know as a Yamanaka remain in the test. At least Shikamaru's cage main making Choji copy his movements are less obvious. He pondered. After the time was up there was only 18 teams remaining it seems Izumo and Kotetsu did their jobs well, keeping out a ton of the weaker teams. Now let's see if I can get a few more to break. Thought the scarred ninja while smirking to himself. All right maggots put down your pencils and I'll tell you the rules for the final question. More rules just give us the question already. Yelled out Kiba. 
I would if you would simply shut up and let the intelligent people speak at Bicky barked back. The tenth question is different from the others, it doesn't matter if you have a perfect score on the previous nine questions your score will go straight to zero, and then you and both of your teammates will fail. He gave a second to let the word sink in. Also if you miss the question you along with your teammates will be stuck at Genin for life never to return to the Chunin exams ever again, even if they get it right. That's bull man there's tons of people who have taken this test before. Barked out Kibble once again. The Bicky just grinned sadistically well I guess you guys are just unlucky to have me as a proctor this year. But don't worry there is a way out he then said in a cheerful voice to try and give them hope, you can just choose not to take the question, although both you and your teammates will fail this portion, but you can simply try again next year, it's a whole lot better than never coming back. He then gave them a few minutes to see if any would chicken out. A couple teams did give up. Naruto noticed Tanada about to break and you'd think being a high uga, she would have a firm grasp on politics to know that the smaller countries such as grass and rain would never agree to such a thing to have their potential chunin completely barred from the chunin exams when they need every spare ninja they can, only those of the five great shinobi nations could actually agree to such a thing. He noticed that unless some idiot that was completely brain damaged from birth yelled out how he wouldn't give up she'd cave in. He took a deep breath, then sighed not my problem. He thought to himself as he watched Hanada raise her hand and give up, while Kiba was screaming bloody murder about being forced to leave as well. Well that seems to be all of them that are still on the fence about this. Ibiki pondered while looking around. Well I guess there's only one thing left to do, you all pass. Everyone but the three Jinchuriki in the room all shouted a resounding what. Ibiki then went on to explain in detail the purpose of this test, and then they all watched as a black bundle with a kunai tied to each end flew through the window that then spread apart to reveal a banner saying Proctor of the second exam. Sexy and single Anko Midarashi. Hey Anko-chan. Naruto called out. Well well you're still here Naruto-kun, I'm glad to see you haven't failed yet, I'd hate to see my favorite Gaki fail the first exam after all the money I put on you to win the whole thing. The purple-haired woman called back. Why only 15 teams left to Bicky? and here I thought you were losing your touch. Although there will be less than half once I'm through with them, Anko said cheerfully with a sadistic grin. Well it's time for the second phase of these exams, everyone follow me to training ground 44 in 10 minutes, and lateness is an automatic failure for both you and your team. Said Anko before jumping out of the already broken window and heading that way. After everyone had left he noticed a note for him on the back of Naruto's paper, telling him about Kabuto and how he was a spy for Orochimaru. After everyone had arrived there Anko started explaining the rules of the test and then randomly proceeded to throw a kunai at Naruto's cheek, which he caught with one finger through the ring. Must you constantly try to drink my blood Anko-chan? You know you're never going to get it from me that way. Naruto asked in a chiding tone. I'll get a taste some other time then said Anko in a pouting tone. After that the papers were handed out, and then each team was given a scroll Naruto's was given a heaven scroll which he sealed away. After a few minutes everyone had arrived at their gate, Anko then called out 3 to one kill everyone in sight. Go. Hey and I thought about ending this chapter right there, but I feel like giving today, so I'll continue on. After about 20 minutes of tree jumping, Naruto raised his hand to signify that there was an enemy nearby. He felt around for another chakra signature and then found one. It was one of the rain nins who seemed to be separated from his team. Probably thinks we're so weak that he doesn't even need them, or simply can't sense chakra signatures and doesn't know who exactly is on the team. He quickly did a shunshun to appear right behind the rain nin and quickly stuck a sword through his heart. Don't want him coming back with both of his teammates to cause us trouble. He then searched his packs and then found an earth scroll. Well we got what we came for let's head to the tower and smash that record. Naruto said as he sealed away the other scroll. After a few minutes of more tree hopping Naruto felt the wind picking up and could feel the chakra running through it, everyone chakra to your feet now. They all ducked down while doing so to avoid the worst of it. After it was finished they were greeted by a creepy looking grass nin. Ukuku, you're all still here I guess I summoned my poor other pet for nothing, oh well maybe he will find some other genin to eat. She said. Now it's time for all of you to die. Arachimaru said while well, flaring about 10% of his killing intent, he didn't want to kill them just yet, there would be no point. He always did love to play with his food. Sasuke and Sakura completely froze unable to move only forced to stare ahead, while Naruto just shrugged off the killing intent. Is that all you got? Very good Naruto-kun, it seems you just might be an even more interesting prospect than Sasuke is, it's not really surprising though that you're better than him, he hasn't even awakened his Sharingan yet. Said Orochimaru while summoning a huge snake. So Orochimaru of the Sanin, I'd ask what you're doing in the Chunin exams fighting Mir Genin, but you just answered that for me. Naruto said while releasing his restriction seals that he almost never took off knowing he would need them for this fight. He also released a seal that was a direct line to the Hokage's office, signifying that Orochimaru has made his first move. 
so all I have to do is stall him until the Anbu arrive, luckily for me he's a talker, so I'll just have to accommodate him. He thought to himself. Gokuku you're very well informed to know it was me so soon, although the snake summon was a dead giveaway a Naruto-kun. Hirachimaru said while licking his lips. After that he and his snake charged, the snake opened its mouth, baring its fangs intending to eat Naruto whole. Naruto just smirked while he was eaten. Hirachimaru feeling a buildup of chakra and heard a voice from inside Bunshin Daibakuha. He quickly jumped onto a branch to avoid the explosion. I am glad that I didn't underestimate him, it would have been too easy if he had just let himself be eaten like that. As he landed, the branch he stepped on exploded because of a paper bomb planted on the other side just outside of his range of vision. He had to quickly jump away again, so he wouldn't have to waste chakra shedding his skin after being burned. As he was in the air he heard two voices above him, and then two directly below him. Katen. Kakaku Fuitan. Datapa. And then he heard four more voices scream from around him four violet flames battling campment. I'm glad I finally get a chance to use this on someone, ever since I read a lot of the Sound Force barrier techniques, I've been itching to try them out. Arachimaru found himself unable to form a Kawarimi, and there was no way to dodge this, and if he fell he would just burn when he reached the bottom of the barrier. Naruto watched as Arachimaru's body was completely burned to a crisp, and then the remains fell to the bottom of the barrier which lit it on fire. He continued watching never letting down his guard, a few seconds later a telltale pop of a shadow clone made him quickly shunshun in the direction of the barrier. He then kawaramied with a shadow clone unknown to Orochimaru, and then the clone called out its jutsu fuitan. Vacuum force Orochimaru was pulled to the barrier from above him, being caught in the air, so he was unable to stick to anything. Orochimaru was then sucked into the jutsu further which then caused him to run straight into the barrier before dispersing signifying another clone. Gokuku very good Naruto kun you destroyed two of my clones, although the second was 10% of my skill, well the first was 50, Orochimaru said from directly behind the clone, he was about to get it out of his way, when the clone used the last of its chakra to use one of its newest jutsu chidori. Stream. Which then caused the earth clone to disperse after being struck. Sasuke and Sakura were awestruck at how Naruto was holding his own, as in not dying against a Sanin, but they knew once they Sanin decided to go on a full offensive and stop playing around it'd be all over. Naruto was searching everywhere while trying to keep his chakra signature masked, he then decided to let one of his clones be bait, he channeled a ton of chakra into it, in hopes of it fooling the Sanin. He then used the chameleon jutsu that he found over in the library, that was put there by some pervert, claiming it to be the ultimate peeping jutsu. Orochimaru quickly found Naruto and then proceeded to test him into jutsu. He went for a strike at Naruto's temple with a kick. Naruto quickly ducked under it while placing his weight on his hands while kicking back performing a mule kick, attempting to nail Orochimaru in the stomach. It was to no avail as the snake Sanin simply leaned backwards at an impossible angle, while Naruto used the rest of the force behind his kick to push off and then form a right when his feet were going past his face the original Naruto made a hand seal, and the clone promptly exploded with a huge ball of fire. This boy never ceases to amaze me he definitely is strong in ninjutsu and strategic planning, but let's see if I can actually get to face the original anti-jutsu without having a clone blow up into my face. A very burned Orochimaru thought to himself while pulling off the rest of his mask that had been burned. He then proceeded to open his mouth at an impossible length while another him crawled out completely unscathed. That's just nasty all three genin thought to themselves. Very good Naruto kun Orochimaru said before reappearing right behind the original Naruto. An excellent use of Jiraiya's technique, but it's not enough to avoid my detection. Naruto quickly spun with a wind-enhanced slash aimed at his torso, while Orochimaru managed to jump back to avoid the sword, the extended wind chakra still managed to cut him completely in half before dispersing once more. We were definitely full of surprises, but now that we, the originals are together now we can truly test each other now, no more trickery. Orochimaru said while grabbing his sword that erupted from his mouth. He quickly went for an overhead slash that Naruto hastily blocked with both of his arms. As Orochimaru increased the pressure Naruto quickly released his arms from the block and then going forward with an outward slice once more intending to run him clean through once more. Orochimaru quickly used his tongue to pull Naruto back away from him and threw him into a tree. While well, a second Naruto came from behind slicing him in half again, just as the clone dispersed. I love Kawarimi. As Orochimaru spurted out a new him once more he continued pondering the situation. I thought that I had dispersed all of his clones, it seems I have missed a few, and his ability to instantly Kawarimi without any indication that he has done so until afterwards is amazing. I thought that we were done with the trickery a Naruto-kun. Orochimaru questioned. I don't recall ever agreeing to anything Oropito Naruto quipped. That's a new one, kinda surprised the dope never thought of that before. Orochimaru thought to himself before re-engaging this time without a sword the same for Naruto. 
Naruto quickly went in for a punch which was simply deflected to Orochimaru's right side, while Naruto spun in midair for a kick with his left foot, with the back of his heel aimed at the Sanin's face. Orochimaru quickly lifted a hand to catch it, but was still forced back from the force behind it. During this Naruto quickly channeled Wind Chakra into his foot in an attempt to cut his hand off. Orochimaru quickly released him while getting a big gash on his hand though. Things kept on going like this for a few minutes, until Orochimaru finally decided that he had learned enough for now, and then using his full speed, landed a large three-hit combo on Naruto's body, before putting all of his weight behind a kick that sent Naruto flying back. While it seems that his Tajutsu and Ninjutsu are superb, he is pretty unknown in Jinjutsu though, but I bet that Danzo covered that weakness, although probably not teaching him any Jinjutsu. He also hasn't used an ounce of the Kaiubi's chakra which Danzo surely made him master. It's also probably one of the first primary reasons why Danzo recruited him in the first place. But I bet he's still hiding a great many things from me. But that's good how he's not trying to show all of his tricks in just one round. Orochimaru pondered while going through all of the information from the fight. As Naruto shakily got up dang it, where are those Anbu they should be here by now he glanced up at Orochimaru. He must have had his two companions go and make sure that no one interfered, so I'll just have to keep on holding out until they make it through. But if I want to last any longer I'll have to reveal an ace in the hole he closed his eyes and then reopened them revealing his three Tomo Shiringan. Orochimaru had his mouth wide open in shock but quickly shook out of his stupor once Naruto attacked once more. As they Freddy could sense the Anbu getting closer, he would have to end this now if he wanted to test Sasuke. He then quickly knocked Naruto back once more certain that he would stay down long enough. After that he quickly looked to where Sasuke was who was still frozen pathetic, he's still stuck in that I bet he won't even be very entertaining at all if he hasn't even awakened his Sharingan, while Naruto-kun on the other hand has his fully mastered. Once he looked back to where he kicked Naruto he saw him gone, but felt a large amount of demonic chakra coming from behind him, he quickly had to duck under a swipe under a red claw made of chakra. While he had evaded the first encounter a second claw broke off from the original, getting him right in the face, while a third ripped it from his head entirely. As Orochimaru used his last reanimation, he decided he had definitely seen enough it seems he can use that at will now, and by the look on his face, he is definitely still in control, and he can probably even go farther. He quickly made a hand seal, and then extended his neck at impossible speeds, while extending fangs that then bit him right on the collarbone. This was the scene that Anko and the Anbu arrived upon, and she watched as a cursed seal of heaven appeared on Naruto's neck as he collapsed. Naruto-kun. She cried out catching him as he fell. You shall pay for this. She cried out before she fell to her knees still clutching Naruto. Orochimaru smirked so it still gives you pain hi Anko chan Well I would love to stay and reminisce, but I believe it's time for me to go now so long. Oh and tell the old man not to cancel these exams, or it shall be end of Konoha. Anko managed to shake off the rest of the pain, now that Orochimaru was gone, and her desire to get Naruto to safety, conquered the pain for now she had the Anbu take his two teammates, so they wouldn't be left behind. Anko isn't this cheating. They still haven't finished the exam yet. One of the Anbu spoke up after a few minutes. Sasuke answered for her, we already have both of the scrolls needed, we were on our way to the tower when Orochimaru confronted us. You see it's fine now shut up and pick up the pace. Anko snapped while speeding up. After they arrived at the tower they quickly dashed to the infirmary where Anko placed Naruto onto a gurney while they rushed to Maroon to make sure he stayed stable. Please be fine Naruto-kun, and I know there's no real point in saying that, he's the main character he can't die now, inside Naruto's mind. Well that was easier than expected, Naruto said while looking over to the Kaiubi. Yep, I guess Oropito really lacked some brains when it came to timing to put that curse seal on you. My demonic chakra easily cancelled out all of his dark chakra that was embedded in it, so you get to have that extra supply of chakra and power, except it's mine and mine only, no weird old gay guys who like little boys messing with your head. Kaiubi said. An. Hope you guys are okay with this, I just really want to try this out. Works for me thanks for the help Kaiu chan but I better head back out of here I need to make sure everyone is okay. Naruto responded. After getting up he noticed Anko by his bedside. He groaned as he slowly got back up. Hey Anko-chan what time is it? Naruto-kun. Anko cried out as she hugged him. Um hi. Naruto weakly responded. You've been out for 6 hours, I didn't expect you to wake out for another 18, what's going on are you alright? She said looking him over for any injuries other than the curse seal. Yeah I'm fine, the most that could have been broken from that fight was a few ribs, although if he was intending to kill me from the start, I would have been dead. If he wasn't just testing me out I would have been a goner. Although I got a nice prize out of this he said while motioning his head towards the curse seal. Anko looked at it worriedly. Hey don't sweat it Anko-chan that dumb pedophile's soul inside of it was easily cancelled out of it because Kaiu-chan's chakra was such a strong influence at the time. 
If he put it on me when I wasn't channeling her chakra they would've just cancelled each other out, but since I was actually using it outside of my body, it now has replaced Orochimaru's soul on the curse seal, so now if I use it, it will be me channeling more of Kaiu chans chakra, although I probably won't be using it for a long time. It'll just be another ace in the hole. Naruto said while trying to calm her down. Well that's good, Lucky Gaki Anko responded while rubbing her own. Define the term luck please because if good luck is having a raging biju stuck in your gut and being a pariah for all of your life is good luck, I would hate to have bad luck. Naruto replied with a smile. Good point, well now there's still 4 days left in the exam you can take this time to train and just relax until everyone else gets here. The purple haired woman said. Well first I'm gonna head over to the cafeteria, I'm kind of hungry right now care to join me Anko chan Naruto asked while putting his gear back on. Sorry Naruto-kun I've got to go report to the Hokage and tell him that you're up and then the new development of your curse seal. She said back. Well okay I'll catch you later, Naruto said with a wave as she walked out the door. After Naruto arrived in the cafeteria he saw Yujito's team already there, he decided to head over there and eat. Hey Yujito-chan mind if I sit here? Not at all have a seat Naruto-kun Yujito responded with a smile. I mind her teammate, Shin, responded. Well too bad it's not like I ask you, Naruto said with a glare just daring him to try and say no again. So what time did you guys get here? He asked while taking a bite. Just a couple hours ago. And you? Yujito answered. About six to seven hours ago no biggie. He responded nonchalantly. Any other teams here? Just the Suna team that has the Ichibi on it and the Trani. She responded while smirking on the last part. They continued having a conversation, with her teammates chiming in shortly after and eventually warming up to Naruto a little bit. After they had all said their goodbyes after they were done, Naruto decided to look for his team. He found Sasuke in one of the training grounds with Sakura in her usual position. Is it really so hard for you to train without us forcing you with blackmail to do so? Naruto asked from right next to her face. Sakura yelped clearly not expecting someone to be there and quickly wiped away the drool coming out of her mouth. Don't sneak up on me Naruto. I wouldn't get the jump on you so easily if you would actually try to pay attention to what's around you or train your senses good enough. But knew a well a prime example of someone using their spare time wisely is standing right in front of you, all you do is stare and drool while being a disgrace to our team. I would have thought that our escapade in the woods with Orochimaru would have showed you how much farther you need to improve. Although even Sasuke wasn't worth his time. Naruto shouted the last part so Sasuke could hear. Why is it that all of the good things happen to you, I need more power, and you get all of the good training. Sasuke fumed having no idea what he just stepped into. Naruto rushed Sasuke grabbing him by the throat, do you even know me Sasuke? If you would look around and stop acting like a bunch of emo revenge driven inaris you would see that you aren't the only person who's been giving a short stick in life. Sure your brother killed your whole family, but you've had an entire stinking village to comfort you. You can hardly meet a single person in the street who wouldn't be willing to help you. But all you do is disregard every person and only focus on revenge. You may think you're so lonely, but that's only because you reject every single person that tries to be your friend. You were a genius who was born with natural talent, but you complain that hard workers like me are surpassing you. But that's easy to figure out why people like Lee and I are stronger than you, hard work trumps a genius any time, while the strongest are a hardworking genius. Naruto paused a second to let it all sink in before continuing. You say that all of the good things happen to me. But once again I ask do you even know me, or are you so stuck in your own little pity party that you don't even notice how people react to us in the streets? When people see you they practically bow in the street while they spit on the ground I walk on. Your Kano has prince while I am its pariah. So why don't you shut up about having such a difficult life, almost everyone around us has lost someone close to them, but you know what? You're not special at all you're just a baby from a stuck up clan crying for mommy and daddy. You've had so many opportunities to have what I always wanted, a family. But you just reject it like it's beneath you, while the people like me who want it more than life itself are constantly denied it. Naruto threw Sasuke across the room and then left. A and I hope all of that came out okay, and for the record that's not just a spontaneous outburst that's been bubbling up for as long as Naruto has known Sasuke. Four days later, all of the remaining teams were now gathered in front of the Hokage, who was flanked by all of the Jounin senseis. He looked over at all of the remaining teams, there was Team 10, Shikamaru, and Chaji probably did all of the work, and that was most likely just going out to search for an already defeated team. There was Guy's team, Kabuto's squad, Gara and his team, the sound team, Yujito's squad, everyone else had been eliminated. A and the same exact amount of people left as in canon, Yujito's squad replaced Team 8. The Hokage then did his large speech about the Chunin exams being a deterrent for war and such. After that Hei Jeko, their newest proctor explained the rules and then questioned if any of them wished to leave. 
Kabuto then decided to get out of there not willing to blow his cover, not knowing he just did. He was quickly apprehended by all of the Konoha senseis that were already there, and then a squad of Anbu he was then sent to Anoichi to try to uncover any new secrets. Hey, cough before calling off the first fight. Ayuganiji vs Ichiha Sasuke. The proctor called out. A lot of the people in that room smirked with similar thoughts going through their minds, it seems that the Hayuga and Ichiha clan's rivalry has continued on once more. This ought to be interesting. After they both arrived Niji spoke first I understand that you have yet to awaken your Sharingan, so to prove how far superior my clan is to yours, I will refrain from using my Byakugan. Although I may activate it just in case if it proves I will need it. Don't bother it doesn't matter if you have it activated or not the outcome will be the same. Sasuke said confidently proving the Ichiha's arrogance far succeeded those of the Hayuga. You're right I will win either way. Niji smirked. But if you insist I may as well do it, but don't go crying that I only won because I had an advantage over you, but that happens all of the time in the ninja world. If you two are done with your who has the bigger stick shoved up their butt contest, can the fight start now? Naruto yelled out from his spot. Both Niji and Sasuke growled before assuming their respective stances. Sasuke tried first to prove that the Ichiha were better than the Hayuga and Tajutsu, big mistake. He went in for a quick three-punch combo at the Hayuga's face, Niji just smirked, this was the deciding factor of this match. As he blocked each punch he shut off several Tenketsu in both arms to stop him from forming hand seals, he then sent a powerful palm strike into the center of Sasuke's chest that sent him flying back. This fight is over now, you underestimated me in Tajutsu, and now it cost you your ability to use ninjutsu in this fight. You would have stood a good chance if you wouldn't have tried to best me in my strongest field, if you had stuck to what you are good at you might have succeeded, but now it's over. Said Niji while smirking once more. Sasuke tried molding chakra to his stinging hands for a jutsu, but it was to no avail. Surrender now Sasuke before you force my hand. Niji requested. I will still defeat you, you shall bow before the Achea. Sasuke. Ampus idiot thought most of the people in the room. Too bad for you because you are now in my field of divination. Said Niji while assuming a new stance. 8 trigrams. 64 palms. He then proceeded to strike Sasuke over and over until the technique was completed. Sasuke passed out a few seconds afterwards. Shousahai Uganiji. Hey 8 said after confirming that Sasuke wouldn't be getting back up for a while. Thanks Niji, he needed a butt whopping to take down his ego a few pegs. You're the best. Naruto called out. Anytime Naruto look me up if you want me to do it again. Niji responded. A and I've had it where Naruto has already beaten Niji and won their spars, so he's nice Niji right now, so picture Niji as the kind he is after the Chunin exams. Next match, Higurashi Tenten vs Yamanaka Ino. The sickly Jounin called out. After the girls came down and started sizing each other up, then Tenten spoke judging by your lack of muscles and the way your hands, face, and hair look you spend at least 6 hours a day trying to make yourself pretty instead of training and getting stronger. It is because of people like you and Sakura that people always look down upon Kanoichi and consider them inferior, and I can't really blame them considering the so-called Kanoichi like you that they see. Hopefully this will help Ino wake up and show her what a real Kanoichi is and inspire her to get stronger. Asuma thought out loud. Are you two ready? Haid asked. Seeing them both nod, Higurashi Tenten vs Yamanaka Ino Hajim. Ino quickly tried to go on the offensive with a very lousy looking, barely academy level to Jutsu. Tenten saw so many holes in her defense and decided to go with the simplest. She simply waited until Ino was close enough and then threw a single punch, knocking her out on contact. Okay I know that she doesn't even have the motivation to train, but is she really this bad Asuma? Kurunai questioned. After having Ino carried out Hei called out the winner once more Shousa. Higurashi Tenten. Yash. Excellent job Tenten. Fan the flames of your youth. Guy and Lee called out. They were quickly silenced by the other Jounin before they could get too far. Next match Sabaku no Tamari vs Haruno Sakura the Kenjutsu user called out. Tamari quickly looked over at Sakura what is with Kanoha and its surprising abundance of fangirls. At least that bun haired girl would probably be a better challenge than you will ever be. Sabaku no Tamari vs Haruno Sakura Hajim. Hey called out. Sakura tried the exact same thing as Ino rushing forward but with much better Tajutsu, didn't you learn anything from the last fight that won't ever work on someone who isn't just playing at being a ninja. Wind side Jutsu. Sakura was quickly picked up and thrown against the wall, unconscious. Kakashi not you too, is Guy the only male sensei that actually put some effort into training his female student? Kurunai questioned. Kakashi shook his head actually quite the opposite, at Naruto's urging that we shouldn't have such a glaring weak link on the same team we ordered her that she put some effort into training, after she continually refused or skipped out, we had to resort to blackmailing her into training with you and Guy. So it's not exactly my fault she's so pathetic. Shousa Sabaku no Tamari. 
Next match, Kanuta Dosu vs Rock Lee Hate yelled. Lee show your flames of youth make this fight even faster than the last matches. Guy yelled out. Yosh. Hi Guy Sensei. And if I fail I will climb up the Hokage's monument with only my elbows and my chin. Lee called back. That down here Hate yelled. Kanuta Dosu vs Rock Lee Hajim just as he was still finishing Hajim Lee had knocked Dosu up into the air and then proceeded to slam into the ground face head first. That's a new record he thought to himself. Shousa Rock Lee. Gosh I knew I could do it. Lee called out. Lee, excellent work let the power of youth explode. Guy yelled. They then went on for a few minute rant much to everyone's chagrin until Naruto put a silencing barrier around them and then make a peace sign. Now that's my student. Kakashi called out while giving him a thumbs you. Ahem. For once my cough came in handy. Next match Nara Shikamaru vs Akato Yoroi. So no words to say to each other then. Nara Shikamaru vs Akato Yoroi. Hajim. Just as Yoroi started charging towards him he found he couldn't move his body. So he quickly caught me in his cage main so what I move the exact same way you do what are you going to do? Well how about I just show you it's too troublesome to tell you. Shikamaru responded while moving his hand towards his kunai pouch. He then grabbed a kunai out it while Yoroi did the same, except instead of grabbing a kunai, he grabbed the whole pouch and then dropped it as Shikamaru then dropped his kunai. Shikamaru once more reached into his pouch and pulled out another one while Yoroi was defenseless. Surrender now you have no way of stopping my attack if I throw this or getting out of this, Shikamaru said in a rare serious voice. That you don't have the guts to kill another leaf nin Yoroi mocked. Says who? And besides I can just do plan B instead, he then walked forward with Yoroi doing the same and stood right next to him and struck him in the back of the neck with a kunai with Yoroi's arm, fully extending past Shikamaru being taller and having longer arms, so he completely missed. Shousanara Shikamaru. Well that was kind of lame Naruto mumbled out to himself. Nai Ujito vs Kankuro. Ujito blew Naruto a kiss as she stood facing Kankuro. Nai Ujito vs Kankuro Hajim. Using her cat-like senses, she quickly realized that the Kankuro in front of her was a fake, while the thing wrapped on his back was the real him. She quickly boxed him in a corner using her far superior to Jutsu and then called out her Jutsu Katen. Kakaku no Jutsu. After the smoke cleared a very burned and battered Kankuro was then put on a stretcher to the infirmary. Shousa Nai Ujito. Next match Akamichi Chaoji vs Kin. This will be over in a second fat so, this tub of lard won't even be a challenge. Kin scoffed. She is so dead thought all of the people who knew of an Akamichi's anger. Akamichi Chaoji vs Kin Hajim. Expansion Jutsu, an that sounds so so wrong, human boulder. Chaoji shouted. Kin was quickly on the defensive her needles useless at piercing him and his rumbling and shouting of roll roll roll, drowning out any chance of the bell sound getting to his ears. After about a minute or so of her dodging Chaoji finally got her and then ran her over. Shousa Akamichi Chaoji. Next match Ryo vs Yuzumaki Naruto. Yada. It's finally my turn. Naruto shouted from the balcony. A and I actually completely forgot about Naruto's fight lol until afterwards anyway, Ryo is another one of Yujito's teammates. Well I finally get to test myself against you Naruto San Ryo said. Yeah whatever let's go. Naruto called barely keeping in his energy desperate to show everyone what he had. Ryo vs Yuzumaki Naruto Hajim. Naruto quickly drew his sword and charged it with wind chakra and then went with an overhead swing which quickly sliced through Ryo's kunai and managed to slice him on the right shoulder. Ryo jumped back and struggled to make hand signs with the pain in his arm, making it hard to do so. Raiden. Raikyu. Naruto saw the ball of lightning flying towards him and then quickly called out his jutsu futon. Wind bullets and then proceeded to shoot three massive balls of wind flying towards Ryo. The first easily tore through the lightning ball and then struck Ryo and sent him flying back, while the second made him crash into the wall, while the last made him make a large indenture the wall, and then he promptly passed out. Well that was anticlimactic, Naruto groaned disappointed not to get a very good fight. Shousa Yuzumaki Naruto. Next fight Shin vs Aku. I am not as weak as my teammate, I will destroy you please surrender Shin requested. Honey I was about to say the same things Aku replied. Shin vs Aku Hajim. Aku quickly raised his arms and then proceeded to fire off a wind blast. Shin dodged to the side while flinging several shuriken to keep Zaku off his back while he perfumed hand signs. Katen. Hasenka no Jutsu. Zaku was forced to dodge the many fireballs that were flown at him, only getting hit once on the arm he was about to taunt him when he felt another Shin behind him as he was about to strike him, Shin exploded into lightning severely shocking Zaku while Shin made more hand signs. Katen Gakaku no Jutsu. Zaku was quickly roasted with many burns all over his body. While Shin collapsed to his knees that lightning bunch and sure takes a lot out of me, it doesn't even have that much chakra in it compared to the ones down in level ninja that use it, but to me it's a ton. Shousa Shin. Last match Sabaku no Gara vs Misumi Tsurugi. 
Tsubaku no Gara vs Misumi Tsurugi. Tsurugi quickly went to throw a punch intent on wrapping around a block, but was surprised to be immediately covered up past his head in sand, with only his face showing. Not even worth my time. Sand coffin. Gara merely stated before calling out the next part of his jutsu. Sand burial. Blood and guts covered the floor where Tsurugi used to be. Shousa Sabaku no Gara. Most everyone just watched in horror at the scene until the winners were called down to the floor. Congratulations on getting past the preliminaries, you will each have one month time to either heal from wounds or learn some new tricks for your next opponent. The fights will be drawn from this box that will be passed by Anko. After Anko had passed around each one they called out their numbers while Hayate wrote them down. Then the Hokage read off the list. The fights will be Niji vs. Lee, Denton vs. Tamari, Shikamaru vs. Chaoji, Ujido vs. Shin, Naruto vs. Gara. I will see you all in one month good luck to you all. The next morning Naruto got up at his usual training time as he was leaving he saw a note on his door. Naruto, Kakashi will be unable to train you due to us all preparing countermeasures for you know what, but I have the perfect trainer for you, meet him at the hot springs at noon. The sand aim. P.S. Check outside the women's side first. Well that gives me plenty of to train like normal might as well keep on trying to perfect that. A and I bet you five bucks you already guessed what it is. At about noon Naruto arrived at the hot springs, he started walking around and quickly heard giggling alongside the wall. He quickly recognized the man from the history books Danzo made him study and also from when he woke up after his mission to Odo. How are they looking today Jiraiya-sama? Naruto questioned while leaning against the wall. Just perfect, they are all so luscious and curvy, oh, and it's such a beautiful day, there's a surprising lack of steam as well. Jiraiya replied in between giggles. So it seems Danzo was right, the most powerful of ninja are insane. Naruto thought to himself. So anyway, I guess you're the instructor the old man arranged for me. Never expected one of the Sanin. Naruto asked a somewhat rhetorical question. Jiraiya looked away before looking back at Naruto, he then quickly did his kabuki dance while on one of his summons, then finished while in his pose. You know, to make that dance even more amazing, and he's trying not to anger him right now when he kinda wants some extra training, some dancing girls would add a whole lot more flair to it. Naruto said while rubbing his chin. That's genius how come I never thought of that. Although, it'd be hard to get them there in the middle of a battle, oh will I cross the bridge when we get there. I like you Gaki so let's get this all over with follow me to my favorite training ground. Jiraiya replied. Alright Naruto, the first thing I want to teach you is the summoning jutsu, I assume you already know all about it by now just lack a summon correct? Jiraiya asked before summoning a toad with a scroll in its mouth. That's right, and I see you're providing the summon let's get to it then. Naruto replied before biting his thumb and then writing his name and blood next to Anamika's Minato. Alright now I want you to put as much chakra into this as you can okay Gaki. Jiraiya ordered. Hi. He then performed the necessary hand seals and then slammed his hand to the ground. Jiraiya saw only a tiny puff of smoke, whom I would have expected better oh well guess I have my work cut out for me. Jiraiya chan why have you summoned us I was right in the middle of making more centipede soup for pa's lunch. A certain old toad said. Now now ma it's fine there's probably a very good explanation for this now speak up Jiraiya chan Jiraiya chan. The elderly toad questioned. Jiraiya was too gobsmacked to respond. You have to be kidding he summoned those two on his first try. It takes me at least 10 minutes to build up the chakra in order to summon them, and yet it took him less than a second. Oh man I must suck in order to only summon a couple of old geezer toads. And they're tiny. Naruto said. Hey who are you calling old Gaki? Wait what do you mean you summoned us? Shima questioned. Jiraiya finally shook out of his stupor H how. How did you summon the two great elder toads? I anticipated the boss toad but not these two. So it's true this little kid managed to summon us. Wow you must really know how to pick good students, first to fourth, and now this Gakishima cried out, while Fukasaku continued to process this new development. Wait so this is a good thing. Okay sweet I thought something must have gone wrong when I tried. Naruto said with a sigh of relief. So if there's no emergency we'll be going now, I'll leave you to your new pupil. Fukasaku said while well, Jiraiya nodded and then the pair proceeded to disperse themselves. Well that takes care of that then, they will be telling the boss about you being the new summoner, so we don't have to worry about that, now we can work on collaboration jutsus with the toads among other things. Jiraiya said while dispersing the toad with the scroll. Naruto then created 2000 clones, so where do you want to start? Jiraiya smirked this'll be fun. One month later, at the end of the month Naruto arrived at the stadium to see everyone already there. After a couple more minutes passed so all of the spectators could arrive, and then the Sandain gave another one of his speeches before Shiranyui Genma, their newest proctor, A.N. just so you know hey it's not dead, called out began the proceedings. Alright everyone, the rules are the same as in the preliminaries, so don't worry about anything new except the terrain, now can everyone else go up to the competitor's booth while Rock Lee and Hai Uganiji remain here. Genma said. 
After everyone had gone he called out the first fight first match. Rock Lee vs Hai Uganiji Hajim. Yash I am eager to show you my flames of youth Niji. May we both do our best and show the world the power of youth. Lee said exuberantly. He was ready for this fight, Guy had greatly increased his speed while he had trained with Hei8 and his purple-haired girlfriend in Kenjutsu, another ninja art that he found he could still perform without the molding of chakra, although he could channel chakra into the blade. A N Lee can actually do the water walking and tree climbing he did it in the Anime when he fraud against Gurren, I know it's not manga, so it doesn't officially count as solid proof, but I'll take it. Niji just assumed his stance and prepared himself, wary of Lee's speed. The old him would have gone on and on about fate and crap like that, but now he actually believed that Lee could beat him. Lee quickly dashed forward at a speed only the Jounin and a few other people could follow. He went pulled out his blade and went with an overhead swipe that made Niji immediately use Katen while Lee jumped back. It seems that there is only one opening in that defense, and that is just as it is ending, so I'll need to time this perfectly, he can guess when I'm going to attack, well his eyes definitely ate him as well. He quickly charged at Niji while making sure to be off by a few inches to avoid being caught in the defense. Just as Niji realized his mistake it was far too late, Lee followed up quickly with an Amit range, not willing to showcase any of his other moves. This time as he finished it he was only slightly winded, his muscles adjusted and improved to handle the strain. Well that was a quick match eh Hokage dono? The Kazakiage said. Indeed it was, although it was a bit unfair for Niji, only the fastest could actually keep up with him, and even with Niji's ability to see him, it's physically impossible for him to move his body out of the way. Lee also displayed a good strategy to exploit the weakness in the Hyuga's ultimate defense. Shousa Rock Lee. Genma called out while medics quickly took Niji down to the infirmary. Next match Higurashi Tenten vs Abaku no Tamari, so get down here. Tamari proceeded to float down on her fan, while Tenten took the convention away. Okay she seems to definitely be a long range fighter, so if I can get her in close with one of my bigger weapons, things can start to go my way. I don't want to be like that Ichiha idiot and try to beat someone in their best field when I have a chance in my own field pride be darned. Tenten thought. I'm also glad I went to the library to pick up some jutsu scrolls to counteract a couple of her techniques. Second match. Higurashi Tenten vs Abaku no Tamari Hajim. Tamari decided to go on the offensive to make this quick win side jutsu. Denton smirked this was perfect. Katen. Kakaku no Jutsu. Tamari's eyes widened as she watched her primary attack get turned against her, she quickly jumped away to try and avoid it, only to be me with a hail of kunai. She managed to shield herself with her fan, but still managed to get slightly burned on her back for not getting far enough away. This is bad it'll be hard to use any of my Jutsu now if she can counter them so quickly, and now it'll be a pain to swing my fan with my back burned as it is. She was interrupted from her musings as Tenten attacked from behind, while with a twitch of her fingers, a hail of kunai came from the other direction, so Tamari couldn't stop her with a jutsu. Dynamic entry. Cried out Tenten as she kicked through Tamari's defense, i.e. her arms. Which then slammed her heart into the arena wall, as she shakily got up, she heard another name called from her left. Leaf Hurricane. Tamari turned her head just in time to head struck square in the face, with one of Guy's signature moves passed onto his students. As she was sent flying once more, she failed to be able to stand this time around, prompting Genma to call the fight. Shousa Higurashi Tenten. As the crowd cheered. A and I know Tenten actually lost, but if she would have stuck to Tajutsu or at least pulled out one of her bigger weapons, she could have done a whole lot better or at least thrown some paper bombs at Tamari to buy time to get close enough. Next match. Nara Shikamaru vs Akamichi Chaoji. The lazy Nara was promptly chunked from the wall courtesy of Naruto in order for him to get there. A and some things never change no matter what dimension, seeing as they were both ready he started the match third match. Nara Shikamaru vs Akamichi Chaoji Hajim. Taoji bounded away knowing that Shikamaru would immediately try to get him into a cage main. Well he attempted to but quickly found himself inside of one the second he neared the shadows of the trees. He looked across and saw that Shikamaru had stretched his shadow through the shadows of each tree until it reached up to where he was. Troublesome, let's just get this over with so I can take a nap. Up in the stands Eno and Sakura were currently sitting next to each other. Wow it makes me feel kind of bad that I'm the only one on my team not going to the finals, like I'm kind of the weak link of my team or something, oh well onto things that matter how Sasuke-kun. Eno questioned while up in his spot, Inoichi was crying tears of shame as his two buddies were cheering their sons on. HMPH might as well not give up, it'll be more troublesome hearing Eno rant about how I lost to Chaoji and that I'm the weakest link. Shikamaru said while well, proceeding to meet Chaoji in the center of the arena. Shadow strangled Jutsu he called out, a few seconds later an asphyxiated Chaoji passed out. After checking that he was okay Genma called the match. Shousa. Nara Shikamaru. A. 
and sorry if too short I just can't really imagine Chaoji getting away from Shikamaru, he doesn't have the speed for it, and he's not strong enough yet to break through the cage main. Fourth match. Nayujito vs Shin. After they both arrived Shin sneered come on make this interesting okay weapon. Let's not make the council pick a new Jinchuriki because this one was weak. I thought I broke him out of that, or he was just plain scared to get back to that whenever I could just hurt him, but now I can't without yujito chan getting disqualified. Naruto thought while well, getting angered, he wasn't quite sure why though. Us you love her dummy Kaiubi said nonchalantly. Hey I don't, she's just a good friend of a mine. He responded. Sure the friend that you have wet dreams about every other night, well the other one being that Anko chick. Naruto had the decency to look away ashamed as she said that part. I guess it's impossible to argue with someone who can read my mind and know what I feel. Yep, but you wanna know what I say to all this? Kaiubi questioned. Sure what? Grisom? The Biju screamed. Not the worst idea you've come up with. He muttered if you can even do that in your mind. He then proceeded to watch the fight develop. It seems they had already started but it stayed in place sizing the other up and seeing what the other would do. Shin charged first assured of his victory he pulled out a kunai and enhanced it with Raiden Chakra before striking. Yujito dodged a first swipe and then decided to go use her full speed to kick him right in the stomach while spinning on her heel. Which sent him flying back while Yujito shunshined behind him while putting a blade to his neck. You may think you're hot stuff cuz your dad's in the council and all, but when it comes to out here you're not so great. She then shunshined to back to where she sensed the real one was while the other shin exploded into lightning. As he went to his knees from the chakra loss she proceeded to call out her technique Kraton. Adama Raikyu. Shin was in no condition to dodge especially considering how he was still surprised that she knew where he was so quickly. He just watched as the massive lightning ball headed his way and then he was completely fried. Genma looked him over and saw that there was no pulse, the lightning must have screwed up his heart big time, not to mention these wounds. Shousa. Nayujito. An as you've probably guessed I hate all powerful ox and I like to make mine pretty weak. Next match Uzumaki Naruto vs Ibaku no Gara. After both arrived they nodded when asked if ready and then got into their respective stances, if you can call Gara just standing there with his arms crossed a stance. If match Uzumaki Naruto vs Ibaku no Gara Hajim. Just as he said go Gara went all nuts, an just think of what happened in his fight with Sasuke times 2. Not wanting to waste an opportunity when Gara was open for attack, he quickly decided to test out just how tough Gara's defense really was. In a blur of speed he pulled out his blade and enhanced it with Raiden Chakra, guessing that the sand's base was earth, it would be more susceptible to that instead of Furiton. His blade went through the automatic defense without much difficulty, while not managing to cut very deeply into Gara's torso. Naruto was then quickly forced to dodge several sand strikes and back away. He decided to use some of his longer range jutsu while creating a clone. Pain. Laser beam futon. Wind beam. Ara quickly resorted to his ball-like shield to protect him from the attack. The blast was quickly turning the sand to glass and then managed to pierce all the way through and then come out the other side. Naruto went to check his work, but then all sand crumbled away with a fading sand bunch in there. He quickly called out his technique suitin. Four pillar water wall to block the attack of sand coming from all sides. He then shunshined back to where he could start again analyzing ways to get at Gara. And wow this is hard to do a long fight where my Naruto doesn't waste time and make long drawn out battles with people weaker than him and it's also hard with Gara not really being an offensive person until after the Chunin exams. He decided that he knew enough about how fast Gara's sand moved in order to get past it and chose the correct technique. He quickly went at full speed while concentrating on his jutsu. Ara and everyone in the stadium of a chirping bird screeching throughout the place. Ara didn't even have time to turn as he was pierced from behind right through his sand armor, his natural defense having no time to stop it, not that it would have done much good anyway. Dodori Rasengan Barrage. Just as Naruto stopped. He then swung with his other hand which held a swirling blue ball of chakra and thrust it right into Gara's gut. As Gara was sent spinning far into the stadium wall, most of the crowd was speechless, watching two famed handheld jutsus being used at the same time. They were interrupted by Gara's screams of pain and then him quickly going into his one-tailed tanuki form. Arachimaru motioned to his guards to hold off the signal for now, unaware that all of the ceiling circles and most of his men were now dead and gone courtesy of Kakashi and tons of squads of Anbu. Naruto had to quickly dodge over top several Suna shuriken before body flickering behind Gara and planting half a dozen paper bombs on him before returning to his original spot to watch the fireworks. After the smoke cleared a very battered Gara was laying there with his sand smoking around him. As Naruto was moving forward to finish it he felt a massive pulse of chakra as Gara transformed once more. Filling up about half of the stadium. Naruto quickly decided to summon his own 20 stories tall fighting machine. As the smoke cleared there stood a red toad wearing a Yakuza shirt with a tanto while smoking a pipe. 
most of the villagers who saw the fight with the Kai Ubi easily recognized this beast as the one the fourth summoned. So you're the new summoner I? Said the massive toad while taking a whiff of his pipe. If you're able to summon both of the elders on your first try and not some tadpole, I think you're worthy of being a summoner of mine. And the fact that out of respect for your father I would probably do it anyway. Good thing too because we have to deal with big, fat and ugly over there. Naruto said pointing. What is it with you Namur I mean you blondes and summoning me to fight Bijus. Do I look like some kind of Biju killer or something? The toad boss yelled. Um no, I do it myself, but I can't exactly match up to that in the bulk department. But anyway we'll be fine just give me some oil. Naruto replied as he saw a wind bullet coming towards them. Have fine Inpu. Toad oil bullet. Naruto then called out his technique Kate and Enden. Then they called out the jutsu together Katen. Gameyu Enden. The collaboration in jutsu easily overpowered the wind jutsu and then combined with it as well and then proceeded to turn the sand into glass. Per instruction Gamabuntin drew his blade while Naruto hopped onto it, channeling wind chakra into it. Gamabunta then proceeded to cut off the head of the tanuki while the rest of its body crumbled away. Gara was completely unconscious while the shukaku was out of it and unable to continue. Well nicely done Bunta I'll be calling you again soon if I ever find another biju for you to fight. Naruto said with a smile and a thumbs up. Genma then came out of his hiding spot, straightened his clothes and then called the winner. Shasa Yuzumaki Naruto. After the fight had finished the whole entire crowd, awestruck that Naruto had defeated a Biju and had mastered two infamous Jutsu and on top of that managed to summon the fourth Toad Gamabunta. Up in the stands, Sasuke was fuming, he had gotten there just as Yujito's fight started. He just couldn't understand how Naruto was so strong and he didn't know how to get stronger, it's not like there was anyone strong in a village full of famous shinobi that were almost all willing to help him. Sakura and Ino were trying to convince themselves that Sasuke was still stronger and better than Naruto, but just couldn't get past the fact that Sasuke can't do anything to stop a 20-story tall biju that shoots off big huge wind bullets of death. Orochimaru in the Kazukija's robes was licking his lips at the prospect of having Naruto on his side, he knew he couldn't switch bodies with him because of the Kaiubi, but to have such an asset on his team, he would quickly rise farther into power. His only plan for Sasuke was for him to be a baby maker to hopefully make stronger kids, to him Sasuke was only as useful to him and worthy of being a next host as Sakura was. Sasuke would be simple to trick into coming with me, while Naruto would be rather difficult, with all of his root training, he must be completely loyal to Konoha. I don't want to kidnap either of them, otherwise Konoha would instantly retaliate to rescue their precious Acha. That is, if they survive today. He decided he had seen enough of Naruto's skills for now he motioned for his guards to be prepared. He quickly threw a smoke bomb and then grabbed Siratobi and jumped up onto the roof. Well, well Siratobi, you've gotten slow in your old age. He never noticed the old man smirk or took heed to the sudden buildup of chakra boom. DRR, will I see how this is going, this body can't take many more of those hits and then quickly make a new one. Arachimaru thought as he quickly had to make a new body again, agitated that he had to waste a ton of chakra so soon when he could have easily avoided that if he hadn't underestimated the old hokage. As his bodyguards positioned themselves to form a barrier they quickly heard a jutsu being called out. Doton Swamp of the Underworld. They quickly had to jump up and forego the barrier in order to escape, but that seemed to be Toad Sage's plan. Inpu. Bring down the house jutsu. None of them had the muscle to stop the falling Toad, attempted to summon a Rashomon to impede the summon's fall, but they found themselves inside a barrier that forbade them from summoning any chakra that they quickly recognized. You didn't think you were the only ones who could make a barrier did you? Jureya questioned. Back in the stands Naruto and his clones, along with all the Jounin and some of the Chunin, were quickly dispatching all of the sound nin that were hiding amongst the crowd while it was proving difficult among the amassed panic of the citizens. He kind of wished that they were all knocked out, he quickly decided to do just that. He summoned about half of his killing intent, which then quickly knocked out all of those who were non-shinobi, while the sound ninja in that area that were Chunin and below just froze, making them easy pickings for the leaf nin around them. Naruto quickly left the rest of them to the Jounin who he assumed could easily handle these guys. He then jumped over to where he saw a falling toad landing on some sound nin inside a chakra barrier. After the toad dispersed, four very battered and broken sound nin tried to crawl away. Orochimaru had quickly gotten away once he saw Jiraiya's Doton Jutsu. After the coast was clear Orochimaru quickly reappeared on the stadium floor while trying to judge his options. Saratobi and Jiraiya appeared in front of him while Naruto stayed back to await an opportunity to help. Jiraiya decided to strike first Ranjishigami no Jutsu. He called out as his hair extended and formed a lion's mouth as it went to entangle and attack Orochimaru. Orochimaru quickly jumped up to get out of the way while the hair came up and followed him. He quickly summoned a large snake to counter Jiraiya's Jutsu, but it was quickly pierced through the inside by many different spikes of chakra-infused hair. 
After the smoke cleared Orochimaru was nowhere to be found. He reappeared a distance away before calling out a jutsu. Mandara no Jin. Countless snakes erupted from his mouth and then all drew a blade that erupted from their mouths. Naruto took this as his cue to step in along with a clone. Katen. Searing tsunami. Fuitan. Wind wave. The enormous wall of fire quickly filled up the entire opposite side of the arena floor, quickly incinerating all of the snakes. He heard a call of a jutsu summing. Four pillar Rashomon. As four gigantic gates surrounded Orochimaru they were quickly surrounded by flames. Barely keeping all of the heat out. After the jutsu ended. Orochimaru quickly heard another jutsu being called from above him. Hayden Enden. Fuitan. Rinkuitan. As the giant fireball shot through the opening in Orochimaru's defense, the snake Sanin quickly summoned a snake to take the damage for him, but the only one capable of doing so against such a technique would be Manda. Oh well, he served his purpose enough. Orochimaru quickly hid in his mouth until the technique was over. Once it was complete, he walked out of the dead snake's mouth ready for his next move where he could gain an upper hand. Bukuku, so unfair sensei, three against one. Allow me to even these odds. Summoning. Ito Tensei. Two coffins came up with the insignia for first and second on them. Well, Saratobi, Jiraiya, and Naruto looked shocked while two well known figures stepped out. Saru, you've certainly gotten old, haven't you? Are you the one who has summoned us using my technique? The Nidame asked. No, that would be Mirachimaru. I thank you for creating such a jutsu, it has come in quite in handy for situations like these, but enough of this chit chat. Arachimaru leaned forward to implant the kunai with the talisman to control them both. Acting quickly Naruto called out his technique Fuitan. Rapusho. The blast of wind quickly knocked away the two kunai, which then sent them to two of Naruto's clones. The fighting was over now in the stands, and now all of the shinobi there have been watching the fight while looking for a time when they may need to assist the trio. They have been stunned so far by Naruto's prowess with his jutsu. Ireya and Saratobi then motioned for two of the jounin in the stands, Genma and Gai, to quickly snatch the former hokages. Once this fight is over I want you to examine those seals and see if it's possible to alter it. Saratobi said to Jiraiya. And just so you know as of now both of them aren't fully revived, they need to have some kind of seal to keep them here, so they can't fully move very well or easily. Hi Saratobi sensei but first let's take care of our resident pedophile. Jiraiya responded while building up his chakra. And that puts a major dent in my plans, but what to do now? I would make this a battle of attrition if Jureya and Naruto weren't here, I can't use too many ninjutsu without them being a complete waste with all three of them being strong in ninjutsu, well with Naruto, it probably wouldn't even make a dent in his chakra supply to overpower any of my techniques. Ninjutsu is an option, but considering all three of their levels, I doubt it would do any good, and also the jounin in the stands would quickly free them if any got caught. Tijutsu seems to be my only real option for this. Orochimaru pondered. He quickly summoned Kusanagi from his mouth and assumed his stance. Naruto drew his wakizashi while Saratobi summoned Enma and transformed him into his diamond staff. Jiraiya just looked at them both before pouting and pulling out a kunai. Arachimaru struck first striking at Naruto with an overhead slash, destroying Naruto's blade, which attempted to block it, even with its wind chakra, while Saratobi extended his staff to block it, while Naruto ducked under the strike, with a jutsu forming into his palm. At the same time Anma had one of his arms extend from the staff and grab a hold of his face to keep him in place, and the other held onto his sword's hilt to prevent him from striking with it. Gureya called out a technique to also keep him from getting away. Doton. Doryahiki. Naruto finished the technique he spent the most time working on Fuitan. Rasengan. Orochimaru's eyes widened at the prospect of getting hit with that and tried to channel chakra to the point of impact to lessen the blow. He was sent flying clear through the earth well before skidding into the base of the stadium's wall. He shakily tried to get up while struggling to concentrate to be able to shed his skin, but found himself unable to. This body is at its limits. I can't go on without surely failing. He quickly summoned a snake and crawled into its mouth, and then proceeded to burrow deep into the ground to make its escape. Well that was anticlimactic, what a wimp. Naruto said while examining his ruined wakizashi. If you are worried about your broken sword I think you can make do with this one, you've definitely earned using it, and it was not meant to just lay around collecting dust. Saratobi said while handing Kusanagi over to Naruto who quickly nodded and examined it. Most of the shinobi were just gawking at Naruto, who had managed to get through a battle with S-rank ninjas without a scratch on him. He then proceeded to make it shrink down to a size suitable for him not being quite used to a very long sword. That'll come in handy. Well let's go round up all of the captured or injured enemy shinobi and check and see if we have any losses. Jiraiya stated. Yosh. Hokage-sama we have suffered only minor injuries to our youthful bodies, we did not leave any alive, although sir. They were most unyouthful and were a disgrace to the flames of youth, and we were forced to extinguish their corrupted flames. 
Guy yelled from his spot making the nearby shinobi who were dumb enough to stand near him, i.e. Sakura and Ino, quickly cover their ears in pain. How do you like it now a Sakura-chan? Kakashi yelled from his spot happy that the tables have turned. Ijido had helped out the Leaf Nin taking out the Sound Nin, and then proceeded to watch the fight proud of Naruto for doing so well. Well that's that then well, I'm gonna go take a nap now that these exams are cancelled. Naruto said to Sirotobi and Jiraiya. One week later, because of your extreme skill and your apparent ability to lead the most unruly team of genin I have seen in years. Also for your service in the invasion we are proud to award you with the rank of Junin, and now because of all your clear experience and the fact that you can stand up to most Jounin and even defeat a full Biju, we also promote you to the rank of Takubetsu Jounin. Tsuritobi said while handing over a Chunin vest over to Naruto. Once you have sufficient practice with working with other teams we will upgrade you to full Jounin. The Sandame said with a look of pride on his face. Thank you Hokage-sama Naruto replied while putting on the vest and placing several of his scrolls into the different pockets. The Hokage then proceeded to give a Chunin vest to both Lee and Shikamaru for their prowess and leadership abilities respectively. He planned on pairing the two up quite often so Lee could pick up a lot of strategic abilities from Shikamaru. Later that night, at the party celebrating the three of them advancing higher in rank, the entire Rookie 9 and Guy's squad were there, along with the senseis. Sasuke had to be dragged there by Kakashi with a threat to be flung into the girl's favorite changing room at the academy bound and not to mention naked if he tried to make a break for it. He was still in a pissy mood ever since he saw how truly strong Naruto was compared to him. He had been training non-stop since then, and then the fact that he made Takibetsu down and made it even worse. Naruto had invited Yujito to the party while Shikamaru brought Tamari seeing how they the Sand Nin were just following orders from Orochimaru and not their late Kazakiage. Niji came with Tenten, and so all the other guys came with other female genin that had asked them out. There were only three people without a date, and that was Sakura, Sasuke, and Ino. Sakura and Ino's conversation merely consisted of ha, you didn't come here with a date you're so such a loser. What do you mean you didn't get a date either oh hey Sasuke-kun will you dance with me shut up and go away I love you Sasuke-kun. They would both say at the same time. A few days later after getting back from a mission with a couple of other Jown and Naruto decided to just relax for a little while before doing any more training. Have a good mission Gaki. Naruto heard from above him. That was a total snoozifist, the only thing good about diplomatic missions are the fact that they pay well. Naruto responded while yawning. Well we got another mission for you, we apparently have to go and fetch my wayward teammate to see if she will try and start up that medical nin program she wanted to do all those years ago. Apparently Danzo liked it but we didn't have the time or resources to do it at the time, but now we do. So that's another of the changes we're implementing here. Jiraiya said. Alright let's head out now I already got all of my stuff packed and ready to go. Naruto responded. After about an hour of walking they stopped at a nearby town that was having a carnival going on. Go have some fun Gaki, it will take some time before we can find Tsunade, so we might as well take our time. Jiraiya said while heading into a tavern. Naruto quickly decided to just head out into the forest to do some more training. After he arrived he quickly sensed a massive chakra signature coming his way that was comparable to Biju levels. He made several shadow clones and separated them throughout the woods to replace with them if needed. And sent another one to go and get Jiraiya come on out. Only a completely talentless loser wouldn't be able to sense that large of a chakra signature. Out walked two people he quickly recognized the two from the bingo book and quickly prepared himself for the fight of his life. Ichiha Itachi and Hashigaki Kissam never would expect to see a couple of S-ranked criminals like yourselves here, let alone in the middle of a deserted forest together by yourselves stalking little boys. Naruto said with a smirk. Both Itachi and Kissam twitched, so he's got a mouth on him eh Itachi. This brat needs to be taught a lesson, although it's surprising that he already knows who we are. Itachi just stared at him impassively Naruto can come with us, am I allowed to say no? No, darn. Worth a shot though, is some tired of just talking when he was itching for a fight ever since he was forced to abandon the one with that spandex wearing idiot, quickly rushed forward with his sword drawn intent on ending this now. Naruto drew his Kusanagi sword and using his superior speed, quickly dodged Kissam's overhead slash by jumping to the left and then extending his blade and then coating it with wind chakra. Kissam quickly hit the floor to get away, while Naruto continued on going for Itachi, who easily tracked it with his Sharingan nimbly jumped over the blade. How did a brat like you get Orochimaru team's blade? Kissam questioned. Naruto just stayed impassive, not feeling like trying to anger them anymore and deciding to concentrate on the fight. He sheathed his blade and went with a different blade. Guten. Kaze no Yeba. He then rushed forward trying to hit Itachi, who was having a hard time keeping out of its way. He noticed Kissam calling off a jutsu from behind and quickly shunshine back to where he was. He attempted to use a downward slice but only succeeded in getting his back. 
Isum's jutsu ran straight into Itachi's bunch and Ibakuha. Naruto deciding to go on a full offensive tried using some of his bigger collaboration jutsu that would make it hard to dodge or for Samahata to suck the chakra from. Suiten. Bakusui Shoha. Are you sure that's such a good idea boy, I mean you're in my territory now. Naruto just made more hand signs which Kisum matched guessing his idea. Suiten. Suiten no jutsu they both called out. Naruto continued with more hand signs Raten. Lightning Dragon. His dragon then combined with both his and Kisum's jutsu before going down to attack Kisum, who was using Samahata as best as he could to absorb the attack. While he was still there Naruto had one of his clones hold off Itachi for just a second, while he himself went to strike Kisum from behind. I merely hate being underestimated, but hey, it sure helps against guys like this. Kisum being unable to move was quickly struck from behind by a Futon. Rasengan which promptly sent him flying straight into the remains of the lightning-charged water dragon. Itachi quickly got rid of Naruto's clone and decided to end this. Look into my eyes Naruto-kun. What kind of idiot intentionally looks into a Sharingan user's eye? Naruto quickly charged intent on trying to stall more time while Jiraiya got there and until Kisum got back up. He knew trying to use plain all to jutsu, Kinjutsu was still risky, although there was another option. Duotin. Wind drills A drill of wind appeared on each of Naruto's hands. This'll help even the odds against those predicting eyes of yours. Naruto quickly engaged Itachi who found it hard to have time to land a hit, Naruto knew that if he slipped up once Itachi would end this. After about a minute of dodging Naruto's strikes, Itachi quickly formed a hand seal, then called out his jutsu. Suiten. Sugaden the technique quickly managed to strike Naruto who then puffed out of existence. Excellent job Naruto-kun getting out of there with a Kawarimi as fast as you did. But now it's time I finish this. Itachi took a step forward on the water before stopping. It's been a long time, Sasu-chan. But as you can see, once again, I am busy so go away. The yeah, beat it Sasu team, why would a genin like you ever stand ever chance against an s rank ninja? Naruto called out happy for the reprieve so he can find a way out of this. Okay they definitely aren't trying to really kill me otherwise they would have already. And the only reason why they would want me is for Kaiu-chan. So that's why they want me alive, so she won't get killed with me, that explains why I haven't been completely demolished yet. He watched as Sasuke started screaming after pitifully trying to kill Itachi. Just as Naruto was about to get back into the fight, he saw Jiraiya appear behind Itachi and then raised his hands in a placating gesture to show he wasn't here to fight. Itachi, Hokage-sama and the elders have requested me to tell you once we saw you again that you are free to come home and that your mission is done. Itachi's eyes, not to mention Naruto's, widened when Jiraiya said that. Naruto's body flickered over there to pick up the unconscious Asuk. Me, but what about my mission to keep an eye on the Akatsuki? It's being taken care of what we need right now is for one of our strongest nin to come back to the village. Danzo and the Sandane will be coming clean with a village about the coup d'etat, they feel having you back will be worth giving up some pride and face in the nations. Jurei responded. He then placed a hand on his shoulder, you know there's no real need to feel guilty for what you have done, it was the only real thing we could do without starting the fourth shinobi war. Itachi just nodded solemnly. There is one bit of unfinished business to take care of though. He quickly shunshined back to where Kisum was and proceeded to knock him out and kick away Samahada while Jiraiya placed it into a ceiling scroll. We'll escort you back into the village and then Naruto and I will complete our task. Jiraiya said. I wonder how Sasuke team will react once he gets up though. Naruto, Jiraiya and Itachi had started on their trek back to Konoha, so Itachi could be reinstated as a shinobi of Konoha, now that his long-term mission as a double agent within Akatsuki has become null and void. It's about time I clear my name and hopefully be able to clear my conscience. Itachi thought to himself. Naruto had a clone carry an unconscious Asuke over his back, while Itachi had an equally knocked out Kisum over his. Jurei was the lucky one only having to seal Samahata into a scroll. About halfway there they ran into Mido Guy, who had been sent to pursue after Sasuke and to make sure Naruto had not been taken. Yosh. Jurei Asama, Lord Hokage sent me to retrieve young Sasuke Kun here. But what are you doing with our most unyouthful former comrade Itachi? Guy questioned. All shall be explained soon Guy, but in short Itachi was ordered to kill his clan and he has been an agent of ours in Akatsuki for years, the old man had decided to end his mission and bring him back. He believes he can do more good for us at home than gathering intel on the Akatsuki. Jiraiya stated. I took a minute to process the words before starting to cry and I'm tears and yelling Yash. A thousand apologies Itachi-san. I wish my flames of youth could shine as brightly as yours for forcing yourself to give up your future for your village. I will strive to fan the flames of my youth to even greater heights. From now on, you are my eternal rival. 
The trio sweat dropped at Guy's antics while Itachi mentally smirked before saying well then eternal rival to prove you're worthy of being a rival to me, you need to carry both Kisum to the torture and interrogation department and Sasuke-kun to the hospital in under an hour. Otherwise your flames of youth shall be vanquished. I immediately paid attention while nodding vigorously, it shall be done and to prove my youthfulness, I will complete this task in 30 minutes. If I cannot do this I will run around Kanoha 10,000 times while they are both still on my back. And I cannot do that I. I you are on the clock Itachi said. Yosh. So long my youthful comrades. The spandex wearing man yelled before taking off in a trail of dust. Well that went over well Itachi said. You really dodged a bullet on that one, oh well let's head on back to the council so they can be briefed on the new developments. The toad sage said before picking up the pace. Right. Hi the remaining two in the group replied. After the three of them had managed to get through to the Hulkage Tower while avoiding any other ninja, so they wouldn't have to deal with explaining as to why Itachi Ichiha was back in Konoha, let alone twice in one day, the first time engaging in combat with three of Konoha's Jounin. Saratobi had already called for the meeting and was waiting for the three to arrive. This probably won't go over too well, oh well what can they really do about it, and we all know how much the civilians love the Sharingan. After a few minutes of waiting Jiraiya entered the room followed by Naruto and Itachi. Immediately the room was in an uproar with the Anbu poised to attack, only halted by a signal from the Hokage to stand down, while the civilians were in panic and trying to make a break for it. Calm down everyone Itachi has been brought here by my orders there is nothing to fear. The old Hokage yelled out while the members reluctantly going back to their seats, while the majority looked apprehensive. The clan's heads just looked on impassively waiting for an explanation, but ready to fight if necessary. Thank you, now to start us off I will tell you all the truth about Itachi and his clan. The Ichiha were planning a coup d'etat and Itachi was our agent on the inside, the elders and I all back up this claim. Hiruzen stated while his two teammates and Danzo nodded. After negotiations repeatedly failed our only option was to eradicate the Ichiha clan, rather than start a civil war within the village, which I am certain other villages like Kumo or Iwa wouldn't hesitate to take advantage of, especially with how recent the Kaiubi incident had occurred and our weakened state. Itachi was the one to eliminate the traitors before they struck first and was labeled a traitor himself before becoming a missing nin and joining the criminal organization the Akatsuki, who he has been a double agent of ours ever since. The shinobi in the room who knew Itachi before he left nodded to themselves since it made sense to them that the peace-loving young man would never destroy his family without some kind of major reason. The civilians still looked a bit skeptical but decided to wait and see what would happen from there. The Hokage continued after letting all of that sink in, now Itachi will be reinstated as a leaf jounin and will begin to partake in missions once more, he will prove himself once again as he did in the past are there any objections to this? Everyone in the room remained silent to ponder what the outcome would be of their decision. The civilians naturally couldn't even have a say in the final outcome since this was a shinobi matter but were just there so they could verify everything that was said to the populace in their districts. I see no reason for Itachi-san here to be punished for his actions, he was ordered to do it and the magnitude of his orders should be punishment enough. However there will be many who will be mistrustful, so it will take major action to win everyone's trust back. Inoichi said while his two teammates and the other major clans nodded as well in agreement. Well it's decided then, Itachi will be sent along with Ureya and Naruto to retrieve Tsune to begin her medical nin corporation, and we will announce the news to everyone while well, you are gone to allow the worst of it to blow over. Sirotobi said. Hi Hokage-sama Itachi said while bowing and beginning to exit the room with the two of them. Hiraya stopped and waited for the room to clear before talking Itachi should mix back in with the shinobi forces, once everything is explained without too much trouble, the most problematic thing is his brother Sasuke. Once his mind heals from his brother's latest Tsukumi attack he will once again strive for revenge, there is no real telling what he will do. Also we have captured Itachi's teammate Kisum Hashigaki, and we should hopefully have extracted all the information he has with Inoichi and the other Yamanaka working on him, not to mention Ibiki and Anko. Jiraiya stated. Tsuritobi nodded very well good luck on tracking my wayward student. A little while later on the road to Tanzaku no guy Jiraiya was walking in silence while listening to Naruto and Itachi's conversation. Naruto would be asking questions on anything related to Akatsuki while learning more about Itachi while telling about himself. Once they arrived back at the town where the carnival had been held, they decided to stop for the night, while Naruto had his clones go out for evening training in the forest and a few more to read jutsu scrolls while he slept. After about a week of walking through Hai no Kuni they arrived in Tanzaku no Gai where they stopped at a restaurant, only to find their mission objective right inside. Tsunade. Jiraiya yelled out in surprise. That's Tsunade. They weren't kidding when they said that she uses a hinge to hide her appearance, she looks like she's still in her twenties. Naruto thought to himself. Jiraiya. Tsunade said startled as well to see her old teammate, what's next? Arachimaru popping up out of the blue. 
unlikely. Who would have thought I'd have found you here and not in some casino or out running from more debt collectors? Jiraiya said with a chuckle. Tsunade had the decency to look somewhat sheepish, while Shizune introduced herself politely to Itachi and Naruto. Tsunade looked over at Itachi intently before speaking, would you please care to tell me why an S-ranked missing ninja is accompanying you, along with another blonde brat, and I thought only Orochimaru had a fetish for little boys. It seems you have that and then one for blonde ones. Iraya quickly took a couple steps away from Naruto, while said blonde quickly hid behind Shizune rambling about how he wasn't into that. Iraya quickly had a look of horror on his face. Tsunade how dare you. After all these years of Pekur Hem research I thought I had proven that I am the straightest guy there is. Tsunade looked at him disbelievingly while smirking on the inside. After about a bit more teasing Jiraiya explained Itachi's situation. Tsunade nodded before speaking again so who's the new blonde brat? We all know how that turned out last time. Naruto proceeded to introduce himself I am Naruto Uzumaki, Takibetsu Jounin of Konoha, it is an honor to meet you Tsunade-sama. Better be respectful for right now while we need her to come with us, she's famed to have an extremely short temper and ticking her off won't exactly help the mission. He thought to himself. Well anyway what do you want with me Jiraiya, don't tell me the old man kicked the bucket and wants me to ask me to be Hokage again because you already know my answer. Tsunade said while sipping another drink. No of course not, nothing of the sort, we are actually here to request you to come back to start that medic nin corporation that you had tried to start so long ago. Back then we didn't have the money or resources to get it to work, and now we do. Jiraiya said. Itachi, Shizune and Naruto just went over into another booth to talk amongst themselves while the two teammates discussed. So how long have you been with Tsunade, Shizune-san? Inquired Naruto. For quite a good number of years, she has been training me as her apprentice, I'd like to think I'm almost as proficient in the medical ninja arts as she is. Shizune replied. The conversation continued on as they talked about themselves, while Itachi started to loosen up showing a more laid-back personality, while not having to pretend to be evil 24-7 or not having to act emotionless during battle. Anoha shall take care of all of your debts and pay you handsomely for leading the charge in this new area, and then thanks to our old teammate, there's a certain surprise waiting for you back at home. Jiraiya said while grinning hoping this might sweeten the deal a bit. The village has taken much from me, it is about time they actually offer me something, just as long as they don't try and make me hokage, I might decide to stick around, but if this is some kind of trick I am out and you'll also be missing a very vital aspect to your reproductive system. Tsunade said with a bit of her killing intent at the end. Jiraiya sweated a bit in his seat before managing to smile, it settled then I guess we will leave in the morning. On the road back home Naruto was talking to Tsunade and telling about himself while learning more about her. The four experienced shinobi quickly sensed two presences heading their way before Jiraiya called out, come on out you old pedophile. We know you and your flunky are here. Bukuku it seems you have improved slightly in your taste of companions dope, it's nice to see you again Tsunade. The pale sanin said while coming out of the earth with his second in command Caputo. I was hoping to speak to you before you left Tsunade in order to ask you to consider joining me in search for knowledge, but it seems you have already thrown your lot in with these imbeciles, although it is a great surprise to see Itachi-kun here after so long. Orochimaru said while licking his lips. Inwardly though, he was getting a bit worried, he knew if he couldn't get either Itachi or Tsunade with him, he could not win against all of them. Kabuto could possibly get rid of the little assistant, but he might not fare too well against Naruto-kun, although I should still be able to incapacitate him by using the curse seal. He kept this train of thought unaware of Naruto's changes to the seal. I heard about how well your so-called invasion went to Rachimaru, these imbeciles as you call them, seem to be able to completely rout your attempt at destroying the leaf village. I feel it wise to side with them, rather than the losing side. Tsunade said with a smirk. I also know the perfect way for Itachi here to regain some trust back in Konoha, and destroying another of Konoha's greatest criminals will do just the trick don't you think? Jiraiya said while getting into a fighting stance and starting to draw upon massive amounts of chakra. That is most unfortunate Tsunade, I'm afraid you may not leave here alive, then Tsunade, the same goes for you Jiraiya, soon I will be the only remaining Sanin. The snake Sanin while preparing himself. Naruto you and Shizune get rid of his little helper, while the three of us will get rid of Orochimaru. Can you handle it? Jiraiya asked already certain of his answer. Sure thing Jiraiya sensei this shouldn't take too long, it's time I cut loose a bit, come on Shizune Nietzsche Naruto said, before adding a foxy grin and drawing Kusanagi from his back. Let's go wild. Naruto discreetly formed a group of shadow clones and dispersed them throughout the area to be Kawaramit if needed. Shizune put Tauntin down, who went to find some cover while the cage level combat was taking place. Hover me while I engage four eyes here up close, so try to keep your distance. Naruto said without taking his eyes off his quarry. The dark-haired medic nodded while loading her Senban launcher strapped to her arm. 
After a few more seconds Naruto decided to make the first move, dashing towards Kabuto, Kusanagi in hand, going for an upward slash. The Buto back stepped trying to get some distance while making hand seals. A second later a blue glow encased both of his hands while he continued to stay out of Naruto's reach. Thakra scalpels, gotta make sure he doesn't touch me with those. Time to make things even. Naruto thought to himself before forming a hand sign after sheathing his blade. Duotin. Wind drills the blonde called out while his hands became surrounded by partially invisible swirling blades of wind. They met together with Naruto going with a right hook at the medic's face. Said medic moved his body to the left while striking with his left hand to attempt to disable a muscle on the younger ninja's shoulder. Naruto quickly followed through with his punch's momentum and rolled forward with Kabuto's back to Shizun, who quickly fired off several of her senbon. The Buto leapt off to the side and then looked back to where Naruto had been to see that he was gone. He heard a rumbling from below him and quickly jumped into the air to avoid a cluster of spikes that rose six feet off of the ground. As soon as he landed he was forced to fall backwards and rolled to avoid a wind drill encased fist courtesy of Naruto. He continued to slide back hoping to get some distance from the blonde shinobi. I can't keep this up at close range, at this rate I'm going to slip up and he'll finish me, even with my healing ability, he's too dangerous to continue fighting up close and by his file, and from the info Rachimaru sama gave me his long range ninjutsu is superb as well, this will indeed be a tough fight. Kabuto thought to himself. Bukukukuku, Itachi-kun, why on earth would you consider going back with these Konoha buffoons? Someone like you is far better suited joining forces with me. Orochimaru stated while still trying to weigh his options. These buffoons as you so call them seem to have defeated you quite nicely last I heard, and I don't normally side with those that are going to lose. The Stokichiha responded. Enough chit chat Orochimaru. It's time that we finish this and put an end to your existence once and for all. Tsunade yelled out while stomping her foot into the ground for emphasis, making a small crater in the process. Dureya decided to act first calling out his technique Katen. Enden. Arachimaru dashed to the corner of the field to get out of its range, only to be met by Tsunade, who quickly engaged him in a tojutsu battle. She would lash out with strikes and kicks, while Arachimaru would continue to try to keep his distance and seek to find an opening. As this continued for a few minutes Jureya was building up his chakra to summon the Toad Elders. 